How are you? Good morning. Good morning. I am sleepy. How are you? <laughs> I'm okay. I'm sleepy too. I woke up at 5.30 this morning for drop. Oh my God. How's drops been for you? Are you doing okay with it? Uh, yeah. God, my mental health is just deteriorating. Um, mm -hmm. Saturday night are my boys' nights, so I usually go out and get some drinks and everything. And it's snowing tonight, so I have no time oh. to go get drinks. So I'm going to have water tonight. But that's okay. Oh, no. I have coffee. Boring. <laughs> I, I'm having coffee with you. I am okay. We are all good. Um, Vic, I want you to introduce yourself. Where can we find you? How long you been in the content creation field? Oh, gosh. I'm horrible with introductions. <laughs> but um, hi, my name is Victoria Ryan. I am a content creator. You can find me on Twitch, Kick, YouTube. Uh, just my name, Victoria Ryan. That's awesome. That's awesome. How long have you been in the content creation film? Oh, gosh. Probably about four or five years in total because I started on YouTube and then mm -hmm. I found my way to Twitch. So I'm glad that you brought the YouTube up because we're going to get into that. Oh. I have a question about it. And I, I will say there's something that I did not notice about your YouTube that you did. <laughs> But I'll, I'll bring that up for a later question because it's a good one. Um, but if there's one person, Vic, that I, I like who strives for mental health and promoting how important it is online, it's you. I'm going to be honest. Like you are so like you are such a good advocate for the mental health community. Um, I just want to say thank you for being on the podcast and start off with a simple question. How are you, Vic? Like how is Victoria right now on stream off stream? I am sleepy. Drops <laughs> week has killed me. I'm usually up this early on a normal schedule, but I am yeah. exhausted this week. <laughs> How are you, though? Are you doing uh, okay? Yeah, I'm doing all right. I mean, like I said, you know, I no alcohol for me tonight, but I'll be okay. Yeah. The drops and everything. Like I said, I'm I'm just happy to be here. I have a cup of coffee. Um, do you have your cup of coffee? Yes, I got my cute little ghosty cup, oh, so we're ready. Oh, <laughs> that's the best mug we've had on the podcast yet. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, that's so awesome. That's so awesome. I do have to ask, though, I assume you've been busy recently with drops and everything. You said you're tired, but have you been busy with it all? Yeah, I'm just trying to, you know how it is in consecration, yeah. just trying to juggle everything and then your IRL stuff going on. It's a lot. Yeah. I mean, it's fun and I wouldn't change it for the world, but oh my God, I feel like I can <laughs> sleep for like three days. <laughs> I feel that. I'm going to be sleeping well tonight. I'll tell you what. <laughs> um, I wanted to say thank you for personally being on the podcast. Uh, not only am I honored to have you on, but I'm so honored to have someone so influential uh, in the mental health field as you are. So I just wanted to say cheers. Uh, I can't oh, really pick cheers. it up, but cheers. Cheers, a fake coffee mug. <laughs> I appreciate you being on the podcast. Um, I want to go all the way back and tell you the first time I saw a clip of yours. Um, you do so some dumb. crazy things on stream, and I swear I remember you eating a bug. Now, you eat a lot of bugs from what I've seen. I actually, for every time that I make one of these scripts for the podcast and everything, I go back through everybody's uh, channels and stuff, and I see that you do a lot of, you know, bug things for gifted subs and such. But when I first saw a clip of you, it was actually you eating one of those bugs. I do have to ask, since that's crazy, what are some of the craziest things that you've done on stream? I don't know how I feel about the first thing that you go into my content is about me eating bugs. <laughs> um, honestly, as far as crazy things, that would probably be the top. The mm -hmm. other thing that I've noticed that my community always points out that I didn't personally think was crazy, but whatever, they're weird. Um, <laughs> but I, if I can't open something, I set it on fire. So I eat a lot okay. of Slim Jims. And I have my own little lighter over here and I just like set it on fire and I don't say anything. I'm just like trying to open up my Slim Jim and everyone in the chat is like, did she just set her Slim Jim on fire? <laughs> like, yeah. I, feel I, like I lose scissors. I lose knives. So it's like, yeah. you know what? I've always got something to set on fire around here. I don't know. That's hilarious. <laughs> I do got to ask when you set the Slim Jim on fire, did it like it doesn't engulf in flames. Slim Jim is like fake meat. Right? Or, well, it's not fake, but you it's like... You just call it fake I mean, meat. You're it's, fake meat. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> it's... A, okay, if there's any real meat for a Slim Jim, okay, it will... There is... Look, I should say, Slim Jims are real meat, from what I've seen. Yeah. Okay, but... We don't need when, two mental health streamers, like, yeah, fighting right now, yeah, okay? Yeah, that's true. We we'll move an we'll, example. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta move on. We gotta move on. Uh, we're gonna go into the gaming questions. Um, we are both avid Tarkov players, Vic. In fact, that's how we met through, is through the Tarkov community. I must ask, where did your gaming hobby start? Oh, like in streaming world or uh, like gaming. Little Victoria? Yeah, Little Victoria. Yeah, yeah, Little Victoria. Pokemon. 
I am a huge Pokemon nerd. Okay. So I would spend my summer vacations. Like I love going outside. I'm a very outdoorsy mm-hmm. type person. But um, if I wasn't outside, I was like grinding all the Pokemon games. Like uh-huh. I had to beat them all. And I get too emotionally invested <laughs> in Pokemon. I would cry every time I beat it. I'd be like, this is my little team. I've known him since he was a little Charmander. Like I'd cry. It's embarrassing. What, what were some of the what were some of the consoles you would play Pokemon on? Or unless you play the card games. Because I know I had the D the what is it? The DCS? What is that? Like I forget what it's called. I think chat can help me out here, but it's like that little handheld thing. It was way before an iPad was a thing. It, yeah, I think it was they a had DCS. The SPs, um, the DSs, they're mm. different. Yeah. Did yeah. you what did you play on for Pokemon? Mainly the SP because it mm. looked like a phone. So I thought that was so <laughs> cool. Because I grew up very sheltered, so I wasn't allowed to have a cell phone or anything. Yeah. So I was like, ooh, it's a flip phone, just like what my friends have. <laughs> So I felt so cool, but either that or uh, the GameCube. Yeah, GameCube was great. I I used to have a GameCube. I used to have a Nintendo 64. That was the oldest system that I had. But um, I'll tell you what, those games back then provide such a nostalgia, right? Like, I cannot get the Mario Kart theme song out of my head. Like, if that came up today, I would start crying. You know, like, it, do you experience a lot of nostalgia with Pokemon? Oh, yeah. Um, anytime I see someone, like, if I'm, like, doom scrolling on Twitter and I see <laughs> someone post a picture of their SP or something, I'm like, oh. <laughs> it's, But it's, I don't know, it's nice to have those memories, mm, you yeah. know? Yeah, 100%. Did you ever get into the car version of Pokemon? Is it, yeah, I did? didn't play the cards. I collect. Mm. I'm a huge Pokemon collector. Yeah. So I had, like, binders filled with just oh. all my cards and, yeah. That's awesome. I, I've been recently addicted to magic and i it's an addiction that i'm slowly (laughs) slowly your great friend sweet has just recently got into uh yeah we're by the (laughs) way i don't know if i told you this at the end of today's drop streams we're rating sweet so that's that's what we're gonna do she Um, deserves it she's amazing she is such a good person um she is she's just a great person all around but she's been getting into magic recently which means that Mm -hmm. you need to slowly start getting the magic so we can play she's the one that got me into it oh is it Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. She's helping me build a little uh, squirrel deck, too. So. <laughs> a squirrel deck? I want to fuck you, squirrel. I got dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> I got dinosaurs. Oh, the Jurassic Park ones? Um, It's the uh, Velamsaraptor ones from the most recent one, Loss of Caverns. Ooh. Yeah, it's like a bunch of dinosaurs and triceratops, and they just smash things. So it's it's sick. <laughs> um, uh, Big, though, I'll be honest. Uh, I haven't seen much other than Tarkov from yourself, at least on stream. Um, Mm -hmm. in Twitch and everything. What are some of the games that you played before Tarkov besides like Pokemon? Um, I was really big into Warframe. Mm -hmm. That other than the Tarkov community, that was the community I was most active in. But honestly, I just hopped around a lot. Mm -hmm. But my main focus when I came to Twitch, I was like, I want to find just a gaming community where I just felt like I belonged. I got along with a lot of people and it just felt very tight knit. Yeah. And I felt that way in Warframe. And then some of my friends were like, oh, you should try Tarkov because since you love guns and all that stuff, like that would fit you. And I put it off for the longest time because not gonna lie, when I watched some streamers play it, I was like, man, this shit's kind of boring. <laughs> There are some streamers you know, like that. is very fast. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, there's constant stuff going mm. on. And then you go to Tarkov and you see all, like, the slow mm-hmm. movements and stuff. But yeah, especially nowadays. But you don't realize until you play it that it's not as slow as what you may think yeah. it is. Yeah, 100%. It's so. a lot different, when, at least for me, when I first started Tarkov, it was a lot different streaming it compared to playing it, if that makes any sense, right? Like, when I started streaming it, I started playing a little bit differently, in a sense, mm-hmm. right? Like, I started pushing fights that I probably wouldn't have pushed fights if i wasn't on stream and it changed me into a like a kind of like an outlook of i don't look at tarkov streamers anymore as of like oh that guy's level 58 you know has kappa incredible player right like i look at it in a content perspective and i'm like how does this what does this guy provide to the content creation field and that's something that's really cool because it's it's allowed me to find people like yourself right very wholesome individuals you know that preach good things and stuff like that and it's just, it's really, really cool finding, you know, hidden gems in the community, you know? Um, it's, okay. it's, it's really, really cool. Um, I do want to ask, before we get into some questions around gaming, and more specifically Tarkov, I want to thank Battlestate Games for today for allowing drops for this entire podcast. 
Um, I do thank you, Battle State. We appreciate you around here. And the uh, snow has been the best thing that you've ever added. I don't know if you saw, by the way. Um, this is something that only uh, Twitch viewers and uh, people that are on Spotify watch the video. But we changed our scenes to snow for the podcast. Because for our, our, um, for our scenes and stuff for the podcast, we have a campfire in the middle like to make it cozy and stuff. And so we changed it to snow for this one. So it looks really, really nice. But Battle State, we love you guys. Uh, moving on, let's talk Tarkov. There's a lot of stuff that happened in the past month. How do you feel about it all? It's a lot. Honestly, everything feels like a blur because it just like it's happened so fast. Yep. It's just, oh, brain's trying to play <laughs> catch up. But I love all of the changes. I've yeah. been really excited about it. This has been a really fun wipe, honestly. Because mm -hmm. I don't know if you feel the same, but last wipe... To me, it was my throwaway wipe. I'm like, man, I'm just chilling. This, it, I didn't really feel like the, the content was there. Everything just kind of felt yep. stale. But this wipe, it, you just, I don't know, with all the changes and seeing how everyone's reacting to it, it just like, I don't know, it just brings that hype back. 100%. I'm really it's, it, it feels like Tarkov again. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I, the last wipe, it didn't feel like Tarkov. It just felt like a waiting game of getting more content. Yeah. You know, and now <laughs> it just feels like Tarkov again. The snow. The recoil, oh my god, everything is good about it. And I'm, we're gonna get into a controversial question here. Um, what are some of your favorite changes this wipe though? Um, snow, recoil, what is it? Definitely the snow, the recoil, cause um, I like to go in with the bear AK. That's kind of my thing that I like to do that everyone yep. gives me shit for, but I'm all about that raw I dog do the alive. same thing. So it's, it's fun, isn't it? Mm -hmm. it's, it's just it, nice it, to go in with just a clean gun. Mm -hmm. And just, I don't know, test yourself. It's, it, it's also, when you kill somebody, it's more satisfying because it's not it something is. meta. And it's, it almost feels like a zero the hero situation, you know? Mm -hmm. Like you're going from nothing, a, bl a bland <laughs> ass AK to, you know, a meta M4. So it, it's always nice. Uh, that's awesome, though. How do you feel about the snow, like in, more in particular? Like you like it, right? But mm -hmm. is it something that you want year round, like a lot of people are wanting? Mm -mm. No? I don't think it'll be good year round, in my opinion. It's, okay. it's, I don't know. I think the whole the seasons changing mm. would be a fun yeah. thing to add. One hundred percent cool, but I can see people eventually getting tired of it. Yeah. Or if they, I don't know. In my opinion, the snow's a little loud. Yeah. Like it it's a be. little crunchy. Yeah. So it would be nice to go back to it and get that. But yeah. then get the hype back when the snow returns. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes sense. Just the patterns No, of 100%. Something new. I, I would love a fall time. I was telling chat mm -hmm. a few days ago. I'd love a fall time with the snow. Or not the snow. The uh, the leaves falling. The trees aren't, yeah. you know, don't have leaves on them. I think that would be really cool. I think one of the coolest changes, in my opinion, about the snow recently has been the bush change, right? Like, you don't see a lot of people, especially on a map like Shoreline, there were a lot of bush campers at the end of the wipe, you know? And now the snow, nobody's in the bushes. Like, you can see straight through them, you know? So it's really cool. I, that's one of my favorite things about the snow that a lot of people don't... I think a lot of people are looking at this like, oh, you know, snow cozy. I'm I'm in my, you know, resort hella cozy. But they don't realize that, like, they single-handedly nerfed rats for a little bit early wipe. You know, like, they, they single-handedly nerfed them a little bit. Um... <laughs> I, I do want to talk about Woods, though. Um, you're a huge Woods oh, main, and you actively shit on Shoreline Enjoyers, which uh, I've seen some tweets, some questionable ones. Um, where oh, did you okay. find your love for Woods? <laughs> where did you find your love for Woods? Well, I mean, it fits everything that I got going on. Like, I'm mm -hmm. from West Virginia and stuff. I love the woods naturally. But it's just such a pretty map. Yeah. And I think, I think personally, I got a little too emotionally involved in games. But <laughs> it's like, it, when I go to streets... Even though there's not a lot of people, I'm just like, oof, buildings, people. Yeah. I need to, I need to get away from it all and just go to the woods, and it's just <laughs> relaxing. Yeah. And also, I want to point out, since you made the comment <laughs> of actively shitting on people in Shoreline, there's a reason we're defending ourselves out here. Okay, okay, okay us woods mains, <laughs> we gotta defend ourselves. <laughs> what do you have? What do you have? That's my next question. What's wrong with Shoreline? Y'all are sassy. Okay, so Shoreline. 
and thankfully the snow fixes it, but you goddamn bushwookies need to move. It's either bushwookies or re- resort. Like, yeah. resort is y'all's personality. And then you come for woods, and we're just chilling, you know, killing Sturmy, doing our thing, and y'all are sassy. And as much as I shit on Shoreline, I will say my closest friends in the Tarkov community are actually Shoreline mains. Because yep. I love the play fighting, and I love banter back and forth. Like, that's my love language. Yeah. Just, like, fight with me. Yeah, 100%. And you guys will fight with me mm-hmm. and defend your map mm-hmm. until the very end, and I love that. Resort's like, the best map I, in the game. Resort is the best map in the game. Okay. You know, I I at least respect the fact you call it resort. Yeah, yeah, we don't. Listen, (laughs) I'll admit that Shoreline is not a good map. If I'll be honest, if I wasn't a streamer, I probably wouldn't go Shoreline so much. It's a hot take, but the reason that I like resort or the reason that I like Shoreline so much is because it allows me a lot of downtime between getting to and from resort. You know, I go to the resort. I have that downtime to talk to chat. I get into a fight. I die. I'll go back to lobby, talk to chat even more. Or I go to the resort, you know, kill a few people, get out with their loot, and it's going to be a, a trek to, you know, path the lighthouse or or a tunnel, right? Like, it, it's, it, that, it's a very good streamer map, in my opinion, right? And I think the same way with Woods. There's a lot of downtime with, you know, between USAC, you know, Sawmill, whatever it may be. So, uh, no, 100%, I agree with you. Uh, the map as a whole is, in my opinion, not the greatest designed, but... I think some of the changes this swipe are pretty good. Yeah, I will say the changes are nice. Yeah, the new the new expansion part is really nice. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've like been there. Shoreline's changed, but the Shoreline mains have not. You guys are so yeah. sassy. And yeah. actually, a couple of my mods are mm-hmm. Shoreline mains, and I've debated about banning them, but <laughs> can't get rid of them. They're uh, I, pretty cool, I guess. Li- I debate about banning anybody in my chat. I mean, I th- listen, Fish is next. I don't know where he's at. He's, he's going to get banned next. That's that's hilarious. Um, you're much like me, though, Vic, and we talked about this earlier. You enjoy community games more, or you enjoy, like, the game's community more than the game itself, like, to an extent, right? Like, Tarkov's community is perfect for that. Uh, how do you feel about the community itself, like, the Tarkov community? <laughs> Besides Shoreline Mains being sassy. Um... Tarkov community has taught me a lot. I've yeah. grown as a person because of the mm-hmm. Tarkov community. I've seen, I've met some of the best people mm-hmm. in the Tarkov community because before in other games that I've played, I have never given out my personal phone number to mm-hmm. anyone. But there's been a few people in Tarkov community that have my personal number. We talk every single day. We, and I don't know, like it, it's just, I've met some of my closest, bestest friends because yeah. of this community, but. Like every gaming community, like in everywhere in the industry, you uh, you meet some not so great people. Mm-hmm. But I've learned a lot from situations, and I've yeah. grown as a person, and I've also kind of held myself accountable on things that I need yeah, to work 100%. on and how I respond to things and handle situations. So yeah, overall, I really love the community still. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. No one's I, perfect. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nobody's perfect. I always have said, you know, I I think it's very important. I I love the fact that you brought up like the accountability part. We'll get it. We'll get more into it in the mental health section and stuff. But it's very important as people and as as people like as humans nowadays to take accountability because so many people are so afraid to be wrong nowadays. It turns them into a very disgusting human being. Like no no disrespect. I, like you know me. I love everybody, but. There are some people that they just, they refuse to do anything for themselves and they don't take responsibility and, you know, provide account or ha- be accountable for their actions, whether good or bad, you know, and I, I'm, I'm very glad you brought that up. I will, I will say, I say this all the time about the Tarkov community. It feels like high school sometimes. It really does. It does. <laughs> I open Twitter. It just reminds me of going in the high school and seeing two kids fight in the hallway. You know, yep. or it's high school with money and fame involved, and I yep. use the word fame lightly, but <laughs> <laughs> no, I one hundred percent agree with you. I one hundred percent agree with you. To to kind of move on from the whole uh the the whole Tarkov scenario, um, I do want to bring in something that is Tarkov related. Um, I w- <laughs> it's funny you mentioned this. We were just talking about the Tarkov streaming community, but when I was looking up the, the tier list for today, because that's what we're going to do. We're going to do a headset tier list. We have never done it with a guest before. There was a Tarkov controversial streamer tier list, and it was like rating streamers, and I was on there. And I don't know how the fuck I'm controversial, but yeah, we're moving on anyway. Um, I thought that was hilarious. I'm going to pull up uh, a 
recording here. We're going to go to this uh, watch thing. Um, let me see right here. I don't know if you can see this. Let me... Here we go. Oh. Hold on. Let me, uh, let me move this above. And then... Sorry about that. And then... There we go. Oh. I shared the wrong screen. Gino, you are so bad at this. Um, here. We are gonna do that. And then we're good to go. Um, and then I'm gonna unshare my camera. Right here, we have a tier list. Are you oh, uh, are you okay. good to go, Vic? You can see yes. this all. All right. So mm -hmm. just starting off, we have it uh, simply rated S, A, B, C, F tier. Um, I didn't do a D tier because I didn't want to add it, so I was just lazy enough. Um, we have the the contact. What, what are these? Contact threes, right? Contact twos. Contact threes. Something something like that. That's the in ear ones. Uh, Swordens. We have the GZSHs, the Tax Sports, the Razors. The X fills the uh fuck I forget these. Chat, help me out here. Help me out. Contact four is right there. Man, how do I forget these? Man, I I'm stupid. But Vic, I want you to rate these according to what some of your favorites. So we can Man, start this off is here. Be... <sighs> People are not gonna like this. Okay, <laughs> my favorite ultimately. Okay. Would contact fours. Contact fours. Okay, I think that's a pretty good answer. I think everybody yeah. can agree with that. One hundred percent. The uh, the controversial one. Okay. I like the tactical sports. Those These. would be next. S -tier. Yes. Okay. My absolute favorite. Uh, okay. The bottom of the list are the the X ones. The X uh, the uh, where is it? Oh, the XLs. These. I hate you those. hate those hate them so many people get on to me about that but i despise them and also swordens fuck them what? i do not like swordens no! I, I know i know okay all right we uh, we're looking for a new guest all of a sudden okay <laughs> swordens are my favorite i like the bassy it sounds like drums when i'm running i like it uh, i like it okay okay well we'll, we'll move past this somehow i, I you know i'll I'm forgive sorry. i'll forgive um, Comtax, regular Comtax. Where do you rate those? Um, those would be A. Okay. Those an A are pretty decent. Those are, those are pretty decent. Now, these are kind of rare. Not a, not a lot of people yeah. use these nowadays. They're the one that go in the, um, the mm -hmm. airframe, or the Fast MTs. Um. I honestly, I haven't used those enough yeah. to really have an opinion on, so maybe okay. somewhere in the middle. Okay, we'll do it. We'll do, we'll do, we'll do B tier. Actually, yeah, B tier for now. We'll do B tier for now. The the GZS H's. I know those things are like. I like them. I, I'd okay. say probably A. They're okay. they're decent. Yeah, I, I mean you hear yeah. everything, even things you don't want to hear. But <laughs> that is the truest statement about GZS H's ever. You hear everything just amplified. It's just like it's it, it's not much mm -hmm. of a difference. Oh my god, that's hilarious. Okay, uh, razors, which arguably are some of people's favorites. So don't. Oh god, <laughs> they're they're okay. Mm -hmm. uh, they're definitely better than the swordens. Oh my god. Um, okay. I'm sorry. I hate okay. those things. <laughs> okay. We... As soon as I see them, I fence them. Um... Oh my god, that you're <laughs> you just add insult to the wound. <laughs> I don't know, I'm sorry. Oh my god, it's okay. Um, it's okay. I... I guess I'd put them up there with A, because I'm okay. not neutral with them, like okay. in here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I I like this list so far, besides the Swordens. And then the last ones, yeah, um, the, uh, oh, what are they called? The G32, something like that, the M32s. Yeah, they're kind of in the middle with me. Okay. Like, I don't really get excited for them. They're yeah. just kind of existing, but. Okay, so let's go over the, the list one more time for the viewers and uh, just for, you know, my, my sadness sake. Uh, S tier, we have Contact Force and Tax Force. Tax Force at S tier is crazy. I know. Tax People Force are, are good. Every time I tell my love, I, them, but... I will say they are pretty good. I just don't. Man, this is your list. So I mean, whatever floats your boat. A tier, we have Contact <laughs> three, uh, Contact Twos. We have GZSHs and Razors at B tier. We have the In Ear Fast MTs one. I'm forgetting the name of them. Uh, and then we have the M32s. And then at F tier. We have the X fills or X cells, I think they're called, and then the Swordens. Hmm. 
Yeah, I'm if very... it helps, I like the sword ends better than the X ones. The okay. X, yeah, that, uh, that I hate those. That makes me feel that absolute makes... worst. Those are basey too. So you don't like basey headsets? These are both basey. Yeah. Yeah, I like Which the basing. Which is weird because I like basing music, but I do not like those headsets. <laughs> well, maybe it's one of those things where you just you listen to a lot of bassy music that you don't want to listen to it in Tarkov. You know, maybe it's one of those maybe. things. <laughs> <laughs> well, Vic, I appreciate you making that list for me. We will go back to scheduled program programming for the uh, for the rest of the questions. Here, I'll turn on my camera again, pull that up, and then we'll go there. Um, but I appreciate you asking all or. Uh, doing that tier list with me. I always love doing those tier yeah, lists. They're a lot of fun. That was fun. Yeah, they're a lot of fun. <laughs> I've been trying to do different ideas every single podcast to make it fresh and fun for the viewers. So I had to do headsets this time because it's something that's very controversial. Um, <laughs> we'll move on to a not so controversial uh, subject. We are going to talk about coffee. Um, Vic, I got to ask, and I know this. Um, are you a big coffee drinker though, Vic? Yes. But it's got to be black, though. Oh. I'm not someone okay. that puts creamer and sugar and all that mm. shit in it. I like it black. Yeah, it could not be me either. Yeah, d d there's no there's no creamer in that. Yeah, totally no um, creamer. Yeah, either. yeah, it's uh, <laughs> yeah, it's totally yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's, oh, uh, my, that's milk, Gina. <laughs> Do you even uh, taste coffee? Uh, no, I don't. What's what's the taste of coffee taste see, like? See, now I see why you're controversial. It mm -hmm. all makes sense now. Yeah. I'm gonna write a tweet longer about yeah. this. Canceling <laughs> the podcast. Oh, that's okay. I mean, I'm not. I'm <laughs> sure it's not gonna be the first time. All right. <laughs> you um, like those god awful headsets, and you drink milk coffee. How mm. are we friends? And you like Shoreline. But we talk about mental health, so it cancels it all out. PEMDAS, right? Like, whatever. whatever. Right. That's the bridge to the friendship, I yeah. guess. <laughs> um, Vic, I want to apologize uh, for not being able to get coffee to you. I did promise you coffee. Unfortunately, we were not able to get that out. Um, but I will say I have my own coffee today, and it is not necessarily a featured episode, but I do want to give a little shout out to them. Today I got a coffee from Cafe Colazzo. Now, it, a lot of people probably don't know this brand just yet. You guys will uh, be knowing this brand. They actually uh, are good friends with our man Markstrom, which we uh, had on the podcast here a while ago. They gave me three blends here today. I'm not going to go into detail about every single one of them, but one is peach-flavored coffee. I don't know if you can see that pink one. Apparently, that is a peach berry chamole coffee blend. So I don't know how I feel about that, but I'm having right now the bright eyed chocolate honey rose one. And it is phenomenal. It is so good. It is just great. It's very, very good. They, they've done a really good job with their boxing and everything. I'm, I'm a sucker for boxes. You know, I don't know about you, Vic, but like when I see a box out in public, like a, like a something where I'm buying at the grocery store and I see a nice box, I always want to buy that. I don't know what it is. I might have a box fetish. The marketing. We might we might be a box fetish. We might be. <laughs> yeah, that um... needs to be quoted in your chat. <laughs> Gino has a box fetish. Twenty twenty four. That's a beautiful quote to start out the new year. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> I do want to point out to keep an eye out on their website for the new the next release of uh, Cafe Colazzo. Like I said, this isn't a feature episode yet. Um, however, uh, I did want to give a shout out. Uh, that's what the coffee that I'm drinking today away from coffee though, Vic, um, what are some of your, well, not away from, uh, away from my coffee. What are some of your favorite coffees to have besides black? Do you have like a, oh, gosh. Specific I roast? mean, I have an espresso machine, so mm -hmm. I had the little pod guys and I really, really like those, but I'm not one of those like coffee snobs that gets on to, oh, well, this note is flowery and chocolatey. Like I'll drink gas station coffee. Mm -hmm. Like as long as it's black, I don't care. But, um, yeah, yeah I don't know, but you, I love just, I gotta ask since you're a, a black coffee enjoyer, I gotta ask, what are some of your favorite now, you might not know a lot of them because, like, who goes to fast food and get, gets coffee, but what are some of your favorite fast food coffees? Because I know a lot of people like the uh, the McDonald's coffee. Do you like the mm -hmm. McDonald's coffee? They're not bad. It's, I Honestly, I think it depends on who's making it, because if it's oh, too sugary, 100%. I, I can't. Like. <laughs> 100%. I agree with that. 100%. Now, I will say, I had, um, do you have Carl's Jr. where you're at? Carl's Jr. or Hardee's? No. 
Hardee's. Oh, we have. Oh, Hardee's. Yeah. yeah. yeah but I've never had their coffee. Yeah, I, I I didn't think I'd ever have their coffee until a few weeks ago. I got it, and it's actually really good for some reason. I don't Ooh, know what it is. Have um, to try it. But no, that's that's really cool. So you like you like dark roast, and you like mm -hmm. black coffee. Okay, all right. Well, I mean, by all means, I just I Are you can't questioning the friendship right now. I yeah, saw the yeah. Here. Well. <laughs> Like, why did I have this girl come on here? I mean, dark roasts aren't bad, actually. I used to love dark roasts. Um, black coffee, though, I just, I can't do it. It's like... Really? It's like... Like, it's it's funny I'm mentioning this because it's my next next question. It's like whiskey to me. If I have whiskey... You don't on, like whiskey? On the rocks, like straight whiskey, I have to mix it with something. I can't. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. That's I've had enough of this. Shoreline, uh, no, okay, okay. I milk will say. Coffee. I will say. I like. I like whiskey on an occasion, but it's like. That's how. Okay, I, that's what how. What kind of whiskeys have you had though? Because um, that might be part of it. What's the one that? I'll be honest. I have. I've only had two in my life, and one of them was in Vegas, and one of them was here at home. I got got one. What is the one? The is pine. I want to say it's like pine wood something. Pine uh, something. I don't know what it is. I don't know. Something. Pine, pine something. I'm not sure. Was it a bourbon? It might have been a bourbon, actually. Because I'm not a big fan of bourbons. Like, I have a handful yeah. I like, but maybe you need to try, like, scotch or irishes okay, or something. Okay, I'm trolling nuts then. I didn't know that Crown Royal was whiskey. Is that whiskey? I mean... Technically, I guess I'm a bit of a, I'm a whiskey snob. So, okay. so what are your some some of your favorites? Out of curiosity, I like Ardbeg, Lagavulin. Okay. Uh, Highland Park was the first one that I like really got into because mm -hmm. I almost gave up on whiskey. I had a couple bourbons like Wild Turkey, and yeah. I had oh, what was another one that I didn't care for? Wild Turkey was one that I was like, oh my god. Um, <laughs> Buffalo Trace grew on me, but at first I didn't like it. Yeah, but um. I almost gave up when I had those, but then I tried Highland Park because I was mm -hmm. watching some whiskey reviews on YouTube and they brought up that one. Oh, so okay. I was like, all right, I'll, ch I'll give it a try. And I fell in love with it. I love everything from Highland Park. I've really? had several of their whiskeys and then I just kind of branched out and found that. I really like pita scotches. That's awesome. Well, I got to ask, what's your favorite alcohol? Is it a whiskey? I assume. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. I like a, a mint mojito every now and then. Okay. But, yeah. I, I, I really like Are whiskeys. you a fan of rum at all? I'm a big um, rum guy. In the mint mojito, yeah. yeah. Well, do you... What do you do with rum? I'm, do you sip uh, cat, I'm more, uh, cat Rum and Coke is my go-to. Like, it's my oh, favorite gosh. drink. I love a rum that, and Coke. That's my just, favorite. I'm not a big Coke fan. It's too yeah. heavy. Why do you like all this thick, heavy stuff? Because I'm a child. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I just being straight up honest, I have the uh, I have the taste buds of a 13-year-old. Um, <laughs> but uh, in regards to alcohol, I have the taste buds of a 21-year-old before I get canceled. Um, <laughs> um, but I did want to bring up, you're, you said you're a big fan of whiskey. Um, I have to ask, though, this is a hot take, okay? If you could only have one for the rest of your life, whiskey or coffee, which one are you having? No. Whiskey. Okay. Because it's just the whole picture of things. Because, like, with coffee, as much as I like it, mm -hmm. I like something warm as soon as I wake up in the morning. Yeah. So I go back and forth between coffee or bone broth. I'll heat that up and it has a lot of good nutritional and mm -hmm. protein aspects to it. So I'll do that. But whiskey to me is also a good conversation. Like the, the type of people that like whiskey are my type of people that I like to talk to. Like just yeah. to sit around a fire and hang out and just shit talk and drink yeah. whiskey and stuff. Like those are my type of people. 100%. Which I haven't really, it's just, I, I guess a different audience or demographic i don't know what the word would be but like i can't pick out notes and stuff with coffee but like i can whiskey okay that, that makes make sense? sense yeah and i feel like i'm the opposite right i've um i've been blessed over the past few years with uh with you know with coffee with gino most recently you know I, a lot of people have sent me some pretty crazy coffees and i you know they they would send me bags of coffee it'd be like this has a hint of chocolate and a caramel <laughs> aftertaste with a uh with a, a a cream under undertone, I'm like, what the hell are they talking about? And then when I started slowly sipping the cup of coffee rather than you know chug jugging it like I normally do, I realized that there's a lot to it, right? And I I mm -hmm. I will be honest with you, I think 
with whiskey, it's just, it burns my throat. I don't be tasting anything. Try different ones. Okay. Like branch out away from bourbons because okay. you might be like me with that. Cause mm. there's, there's a handful of bourbons I like, but maybe try a couple different Irishes like red breast. A lot of people mm. like red breast. Okay. It's got like a, a bready aspect to it. Oh, so okay. if you like, yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. Or you might like smoky flavors, just kind of. That sounds really cool. That I mean, I'm going to go try that whenever the snow isn't outside, but I, I really appreciate the recommendations. I got to ask, yeah. you mentioned bone broth. Is that mm -hmm. is that something that you uh you do a lot of? I know in in the states that we're located in, like uh you know whatever part of the country this w would be considered. I feel like bone broth is actually very popular, right? Mm -hmm. Like especially when you're sick. Are you a big bone bone broth person when you're sick? Because oh, that's yeah. like that's like the go to, especially yeah, in the Amish wanna... community. <laughs> yeah, I'm just just well, being I honest. I want to learn to make my own, but mm. uh, there's some really good brands out there like Kettle and Fire. They can be a yeah. bit expensive. But it's really nice, and it's an acquired taste too. Yeah. So you might need to like play around with yeah. it and try your own seasonings and stuff to add. But it's really nice, especially when you first wake up in yeah. the morning. Yeah, I mean, warm bone broth, I assume, is something that mm -hmm. cold oh, yeah. cold bone broth would be disgusting. Mm, yeah, yeah, that's that's <laughs> disgusting. Well, I got to ask, just you know, out of curiosity, if somebody was to start drinking bone broth, what, is there a brand that you recommend to start off with? I would say kettle on fire. Kettle I mean, fire. it's it's expensive, okay. but it's the safest that you wouldn't really need to add seasonings mm -hmm. or anything just yeah. to kind of like, because the taste is a bit weird the yeah. first time you have it. So that'd be the okay. safe bet. You can also, uh, I recently got a uh, bone broth powder. So it's just like a big jug, kind of like your uh, protein powders. Oh. And you can, yeah, it's... you can do it that way. You can add warm water to it and it's really good. Okay. Kind of yeah, like, um... No, I feel like that's a bad example. I'm not even going to bring up my example. That was a stupid example. Um, I want to move on, though, Vic. I want to talk about content <laughs> creation. Um, yeah. The content you create is not only heartwarming and positive. I, I've, I've <laughs> said that so many times already. Uh, but you're a blast to hang out with while in chat. Like, I'll, I'll be honest. When <laughs> when I used to watch Twitch, I don't watch much Twitch anymore. Just I've been so busy taking care of myself and everything. Um, you, are, you were one of my favorites to hang out and just, like, work oh, because you're so you, you're just like a such a character to hang out with and just you know sit back relax and uh and just enjoy the content right how do you describe your content to other people it's honestly it's my chat attacking me and just me defending myself for four hours to yep. be honest with you and like i apologize but like i love doing podcasts mm -hmm. but i'm a nervous wreck coming yep. over here because i'm like oh man what if you know gina's community doesn't like me what if they yeah. think that i'm weird but for some reason when i'm on my twitch stream it's mm -hmm. like i can just be me and mm. all my fellow weird shithead people find me and we just like <laughs> we banter it literally is just us bantering yeah. for four hours and it's so comical mm -hmm. <laughs> and i just feel like i could be myself and i'm yeah. very very lucky to have found the group of people that i have because i've met some of the funniest people <laughs> it's so important <laughs> to have that too right i always yeah. um i've said this probably every podcast and it's i'm a firm believer of it is a uh, you attract what you reflect, right? And the fact that you feel as though your community is, you know, super, you know, uh, silly and funny and stuff like that probably means that you're also a silly, funny person, you know, <laughs> heartwarming community, even though they make fun of you and stuff. You know, I'm sure you make fun of them a little bit here and there as oh, well. Oh, yeah, I'm flipping yeah. them off, telling them to go fuck themselves. Like, thank God that's not TOS, because I would have been banned, like, first month in streaming. Yeah, that's hilarious. Shit. No, but that's that's so important, to, especially as a streamer, to have that community. I'm glad you took the time here today to be on the podcast. I always say that I make this shit sound so professional, like these podcasts and everything, but I truly mean this. This is just like having a cup of coffee with a friend. Like, I try and... I don't really look at chat that much when I'm, you know, doing uh doing this podcast because I just want to enjoy a cup of coffee with a friend of mine, you know, and that's why we're uh -huh. here. And that I I hope nobody in if you're watching this right now and you're you're contemplating being on the podcast, I can promise you right now that uh, we just like having a cup of coffee around here, and that's what we like, what we trying to do. But I'm I'm thankful you're on here today, Vic. Um, I do got to ask. Uh, I noticed you've been streaming on some uh, different platforms the past few years. So the most recent one is Kick. Uh, how has that been for you? 
Um, it's been fun. Honestly, I need to get back into the routine of things because by the time um, I'm done for the week streaming on Twitch mm -hmm. and all the other like YouTube stuff and everything, it's like, man, I'm tired. <laughs> 100%. But I've really enjoyed it. I mean, Kick's got a lot of work that they need to, mm -hmm. to do with the platform and... I still feel like Twitch is my home, but I've been enjoying it. Have you tried Kick Out yet or I debating have. it? Or? I probably, I don't know. I don't know the time frame. I want to say something like six months ago. I was on Kick. <laughs> I I think I racked up like 400, uh, 400 um, followers and then I just quit. I would stream once a month. And I don't know why, but when I streamed once a month, that one time that I did stream, people would come in and just give me a lot of subs. And it felt like... Aww. It just felt so, like, it just, the community there is great. And there's a lot of good people in there. Um, there are some questionable things with the community. It's just, um, with Twitch recently adding some of these, you know, Partner Plus programs and everything. It's just been mm -hmm. hard, you know, putting all my eggs in different baskets. And I've kind of been just settling down here on Twitch recently. Um, but yeah, no, Kick is a great place. It, it has a pretty cool community and everything, right? Mm -hmm. there, there's some questionable people, but, you know, th like... There's some pretty cool stuff over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been fun. It's always fun as a content creator to kind of like try different platforms, mm -hmm. see what works, and I don't know. It's mm -hmm. just fun, the creative aspect, I guess. Yeah, 100%. That's that's awesome. Um, And something, I think this is the... Uh, actually, no, it's not. Um, I've, I've received so many comments about how your content is not only good, but very influential in regards to mental health. So I usually ask people... You know, occasionally, maybe once a week, like after these podcasts, like who's somebody you guys would want to see on? I've gotten a lot of requests for you because of your mental health. Really? Yeah, because oh, of gosh, your. I hope I don't let people down. No, I'm a nervous wreck. No, <laughs> no, it's okay. You are all good. We're talking mental health and everything. This is good. No, it's all good. You are not letting anybody down. Do not worry. Do not worry. Um, I did have to ask, how did you start this journey with sharing mental health on stream? Um, honestly, it's been my own journey of things, and mm -hmm. I've just, through, especially through social media, yeah. had some instances where it's like I do a lot of self-reflection and yeah. self-awareness and just kind of realizing patterns of things in my life, of the type of people I attract and situations I get mm -hmm. myself into, and it just got to the point that's like... I got some work to do, you know, because I do believe it, it's a big word to use, but I do believe all of us have at least some form of trauma in our lives. Yeah. And even if it's not our fault or, you know, of, of the type of people we interact with or, you know, whatever, even if I was the problem, whatever, it's up to us on how to deal with it, you mm -hmm. know, and process everything. Say if like you, hypothetically, if you were mentally abusing me, yes, mm -hmm. it's not my fault, but also I need to take the situation, hold myself accountable for things and learn from it, grow from it. Yeah. So I don't go through that again, you know? Yeah, 100%. And I see a lot of the times people use it as a weapon Mm -hmm. especially on social media to yes. farm engagement and to attack other people mm -hmm. and that is not how you deal with trauma and that's just kind of what i i like to talk about it's 100%. like yes these things have happened but i'm not going to use it as a weapon to hurt other people yeah even if it's not my fault like yeah and i i feel like you bringing that up is very important because there's so many creators nowadays i talked to with pest silly about this you know in a previous podcast is so much content is driven around people's negativity towards other people nowadays. And it's, it, in my opinion, it's a very disgusting way of creating content, right? The fact that you have to belittle somebody to make yourself better is just such a, is such a piss poor way of living life. And I, I'm a firm believer in that. If you have to genuinely, if you sit down and genuinely hate on somebody in for, in regards for a, a, a like or, or, you know, a follow, right? If you do that because of engagement, it is, it, you fall into, into the toxic currency of a like. And I, I always call it a toxic mm -hmm. currency because so many people nowadays, they they look at this negativity in their lives and they, they figure that, oh, I'm having a bad day, so I'm going to make other people's days bad. I'm a negative person, so I'm going to respond with negativity. But one thing that I've realized, and I'm sure you can 100% agree with this, is that when you when you sit down at the end of the day with yourself and you reflect on your day, if I look at my if I look at 
throughout my day and I've done a lot of negative things towards other people or towards myself, I just, I can't deal with myself in a sense, right? Like, it, it, it hurts me to go to bed at night knowing I've done somebody wrong, you know? And I don't know how people do it nowadays in regards to content. I feel like people make it an excuse to be negative mm -hmm. towards somebody because it's their persona or their their personality, you know? And you see that so much nowadays, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's normalized. It's it's bad. And, mm -hmm. and, and what sucks the most is people like us, when we try and be positive or promote mental health, do you know how many people, I'm sure you've gotten this before, you know how many people try and say that we're fake because we're saying that we're positive? It's like they hold us to a higher standard and forget that we're a human being yes. and we still go through emotions of anger and that's one of my issues. I have a bad temper. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, is and it, they you just hold forget. Your... It's like, yeah. I mess up. Like, I have a temper, but it's up to me to hold myself accountable mm -hmm. and process through things in a healthy way. 100%. It's tough, but... 100%. And I, I think one quote that really relates to this is... Uh, Nobody's gonna, coming to save you but yourself. And I, I heard that quote, you know, years ago. My therapist tells it to me all the time. You know, nobody's coming to save you but yourself. You know, you can have a therapist. You can have, you know, anti-anxiety medication or this medication or that. And you can do all these things. But nobody is going to be able to sit down and fix all your issues but yourself. You know, and I, I think that's very important for a lot of people nowadays. And I, I encourage everybody that feels as though that they're a negative person. Um, one thing that I do uh, really recommend in if you feel as though you're a negative person or you uh, you don't like the way that you're living right now is uh, start surrounding yourself with good people. And I'm a firm believer in that. I'm sure, Vic, you are too. Uh, once you surround yourself with people that are like-minded uh, with yourself, but also people that lift each other up, you know, but also are real with each other. You know, I one of my main mods, Saint, he's, he's one of the coolest dudes I know because he not only keeps it real with me, but he also will tell me, he'll tell me how it is for one. Like if I bring an issue to him, he'll tell me how it is for one, but he'll also be there for me if I, if I need him, you know, and that's the best type of friend, you know, and I, I, agree. I, I hear a quote, I, or I heard a quote um, a while ago. It was like, tell me your five best friends and I can tell you who you are. You know, and I'm a firm believer in that, you know, and you surround yourself with so many great people, Vic, like, sweet. I just saw sweet oh, just yeah. say Mernin in here. She was in here. Sweet is a great person. And that leads me to believe, Vic, that you're a good person, even though I knew that already. But, uh, you know, you get what I'm saying, right? Um, that's awesome, though, where you where you started your journey and stuff. Um, when I first met you, Vic, it was a few years ago, and neither of us were partnered. This was before, you know, pre-partner days. Um, We've when come you, a long way. We have. We have. <laughs> Um, when you first started, who were some of the ones you were inspired by? Um, I definitely look at the, uh, the fellow women Tarkov streamers mm -hmm. and watch them because, uh, I do believe like surrounding yourself with good people yes. and I love just the energy of women streamers that are business minded mm -hmm. they're confident they surround yep. themselves with good people so I saw I saw streamers like sweet mm -hmm. uh sigma uh genji is one yeah. um and those are the the female ones that I saw that I was like oh wow you know they're out here kicking ass yeah and they're still very sweet they're confident in who they are at least they portray that I mean I know we all have insecurities mm. and stuff but I I would see them and I'd be like oh I want to be like them like I yeah. I want to you know be someone that kind of like them that have people looking yeah, up to one, them and 100 and kind of going back to the friend situation you know some of the best friends are the ones that motivate you to be a better person mm -hmm. you know and when you inspire to somebody you know even though they might not be your friend and then or now or whenever it may be right like you can motivate to be somebody like them you know you inspire yeah. to be like them and it's really cool shout out the chatettes right like the chatettes are yeah. they're they're all great people everybody in there is nice i love nixia i've I am so long overdue with games with Nixia. I love all of the chatters. They're such great people. You guys are... Even if she puts ketchup on everything, yeah, though, right? Yeah, I, so I've weird. heard about that. I heard about that. I think she said that she put <laughs> ketchup on steak. Is that true? Oh, I saw a picture of... I, I know she put ketchup on mac and cheese. 
And that when I, oh. I when I saw that, I was like, oh, Nixie, I'm kind of wanting to block you after this yeah. one. But I didn't. I, I stayed yeah. strong. But yeah, I do think there was one where she put ketchup on steak and glad, I, part of me died. I'm and glad so. that's something we can agree on, Vic. OK, even though the whiskey we haven't agreed on, the coffee we haven't agreed Canadians, on. Canadians, man, yeah. they're a little weird. They, <laughs> oh, you're pretty. Yes. <laughs> oh my god just clip it i've done the podcast we're done i i shit on canadians like jokingly all the time i make no, fun of Canadians back and forth with you yeah they do and it, it, I, I tell them all the time they want to fucking be like me they want to be an american but they just don't show it they they, mm. they do everything they copy us vic and it pisses me off and then they change the name of it and act like it's different i hate it exactly tim hortons is like starbucks <laughs> Okay, I'm pissed You're off. You're passionate sorry. about this. Yeah, sorry, I, I am. I'm, I'm pissed off. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, we need to move on. I'm getting a little too... too. Man, I'm pissed off, bro. Oh, man. Um, I wanted to touch on your uh, your fascination with wildlife. And most really, um, importantly, oh, yeah. your parrot, right? That's when I... That's another clip when I first started watching you. You had a uh, you had a parrot. Um, I know you mm -hmm. made some YouTube videos in the past with your parrot, parrot years ago. How did that come about? How did you just start making videos with a parrot? I honestly, oh, my content creation startup has been weird, but I didn't originally start out with doing parrot videos. Mm -hmm. I was doing um, different types of content, like I did makeup and stuff like that. And I'd have my bird with me and people would nonstop ask about my bird. And I was like, oh my God. And then um, I saw a lot of comments and people would be like, oh, because of you, I'm getting a bird. And that's when I was like, oh, that's no, no, awesome. no, 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 no. <laughs> it, it was it was great. But then I was like, no, there is so much to parrots yeah. that people need to know about. So I made a video that mm -hmm. uh, I, I made controversial uh, titles in the past mm -hmm. of my videos that got me a lot of attention because uh, my title of the video that popped off was... Um, Something along the lines of why I got a green cheek conure and I never will again. Mm -hmm. And in the animal community, that's like yeah. big no no. Yeah. It's like and saying you realize, you hate like, your dog. You know, it's like yeah, it's like it's like saying I'm never gonna get a dog. Yeah. And I was like, public enemy number one. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> the amount of comments, but people need to know that birds they are messy. They are a pain in the ass to train, mm -hmm. and you gotta know what you're doing with them. Like, don't just go out and get a bird and be like, oh, I'm gonna be like Victoria. No. Yeah. So I made videos like that to kind of like, yeah, I don't know, 100%. show people that this is not easy. Yeah, and you've you had, can't train them like a dog. Yeah, exactly. And you've had a, a wide variety of animals. I must ask you, you've had cats and everything, you've had mm -hmm. dogs, correct? Yes. Am I wrong about Yeah. So, what does it compare to like a parrot? Like training a dog compared to a parrot? Is it a lot different? Is it harder? Is it easier? Honestly, I think it's a lot harder with parrots. Really? Because okay. Because it it's very. I mean, with animals in general, there needs to be a lot of positive reinforcement and mm -hmm. stuff, you know. But yeah. with parrots, it's a lot of things like um, the the biting is a big issue with parrots. And a lot of people don't realize the way birds communicate and the way they act is through their beak. They don't have paws and stuff like dogs mm -hmm. do. And a lot of the times people interpret how the birds would be with their beak as negative. Mm -hmm. And they forget that, that that's just a bird's natural instinct. They're going to bite. You will never get rid of that 100%. That's how they communicate. That's how they, you know, get around. They use their beak, especially mm -hmm. if the birds' wings are clipped and stuff. So it, it'd be stuff like that. So... <sighs> Maybe it would be more difficult with the parrot if you've never been around birds. That makes because sense. the typical household animal is a dog or a cat. Yeah. So people are more accustomed to how to train dogs and cats. It's mm. just it's a different world, basically. Yeah, one hundred percent. No, that's really that's really cool that you I feel like it's not, it's rare nowadays to own a bird. You know, I don't know mm. if it's necessarily become more rare or less rare, but when and I... they poop everywhere, too. That's another Do thing people don't realize. Oh, my gosh. It's very difficult to train a bird to poop in specific places. Oh, you know? I'm sure. It's I... doable, but... Yeah, well, I got to ask. Yeah. When you come home, right? Like, when... I'm, I'm sure you have a cage for a bird, right? Like, it, mm -hmm. to put them in when you're gone. But, like, let's say you're chilling around the house and you just let the let the bird loose. 
Is, is it like a dog? Like you'll just come into the bedroom sometimes, and they they just laying on the laying on the bed, or like how how does like a bird relax? You know, like I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, mine would like to sit on my shoulder oh, okay. or on the top of my head, which there's controversial things about letting the bird sit on your head because some people think that it's a dominance thing and they own you basically. Mm -hmm. I personally don't like my birds on my hair uh, or my head because they chew off my hair. Oh my so, god! Oh my god! <laughs> so I, I had to use positive reinforcement to train them to be like, "Hey, my shoulder is good." Yeah. Don't be on top of my head. One hundred percent. They like to be in the room with you, and mm -hmm. a lot of the times, mine would like to sit on my monitors. Which at first I was, I was like, okay, you can sit on my computer monitors until I realized they were pooping on them. So I had to like <laughs> reinforce them and make them like little little stands and stuff yeah. for them. So a lot of it is redirecting their behavior and using positive reinforcement. Okay, that's like that. really cool. I, I, I'm learning a lot from this podcast, <laughs> you know, not only about the whiskey and the coffee, but about the birds. So yeah, sorry, I appreciate no, like no, 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 <laughs> no, I love it. I know that's that's something that I love sharing with this podcast is like, you know, stories and like really cool, you know, things, information like that. Like, that's really, really cool. I'm sure a lot of people in chat think the, think the same thing. I want to point out, Vic, um, speaking about YouTube, I didn't know that you did music reaction videos. Yeah, that's a fairly new one. I've been trying. I did not know you did that. And I found <laughs> about that out going back in your channels yesterday, like your link tree. And I I saw the YouTube. I was like, oh, music reactions. She's probably doing like some Tarkov video where she reacts in Tarkov. You do like actual music, re and they're good because you listen to oh, a lot, you, you you listen to a lot of um the Oliver Anthony. The that guy is really yeah. really good. He he's also from West Virginia, isn't he? I think uh, so. I think it's Virginia. Oh okay. I think. Okay. I know one of his songs popped off on West Virginia radio. Oh, that's what, so it, that's was. what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought he was somewhere somewhere around Virginia, West Virginia. Um, mm -hmm. Do you like doing those mu music reactions? I love it. Do you? I love music. So I grew up, start like the only music I was allowed to listen to was country and gospel. Mm -hmm. So I have the country background. And my dad's really big into bluegrass, so I'd hear bluegrass, you know, I'd walk into the garage and he's, you know, he's, uh, he hunts and traps, so he'd be, mm. sorry if this is TMI, no, he'd be you're skinning good. an animal, yeah. listening to bluegrass, <laughs> and so I had that background, and then I left the country scene and mm -hmm. started listening to metal music and stuff like that, I branched out and I left country, mm -hmm. and I started doing metal reactions, but then people heard my accent, and they're like, where are you from? And I told them West Virginia, and they're like, have you listened to so-and-so? And so I started reacting to them, I started um, reacting and listening to Ryan up church okay. and you know kind of getting back into yeah. the country scene again so it, it's been it's been a lot of fun that's i met a lot of really cool artists and made some connections in that community and it's been a lot of fun that's really cool and like i said they're professional right like when i yeah. when i uh, no this isn't you know dissing anybody when i look at tarkov creators or tarkov content or uh tarkov streamers you know specifically right like when i go to their youtube i realistically expect Tarkov content. But when I went to yours, it was music reactions that were really fucking good. I'm like, what the hell is Dude, this? I was my in my brain's all over the place, man. Yeah. I can't <laughs> stay in one niche. I'm like, ooh, let's try this. Let's yeah. try that. But, which is which is pretty cool because I my next question, even if you only stream Tarkov, I consider you a variety content creator because well, like you. you have these bunch of different niches, right? Like you do vlog content on your on your TikTok. Like I saw the vlog TikTok, right? Um, that was really cool. The music reactions. What is your, some of your favorite content to make? Oh gosh, I've hopped around so much. I've done makeup birds, haunted dolls. Mm. I've done the music stuff. I'm all over the place, but I think my favorite would be aside from streaming. Cause I just, I love streaming, but mm. would be outdoor content. I love just going outside, shooting guns, shooting my bow and making content around that. Yeah. So that's probably be my favorite. That's awesome. Are you a big hunter? Out of curiosity. Yes and no. It's okay. a weird thing because, you know, mm. half of me is like, oh, you know, animals. I love, love, yeah. love animals. But then also, like, I don't hunt for sport. I mm. hunt to eat, basically. Yep, so if I, I go deer hunting, yep. I'm hunting for food. Yeah. So um, I enjoy deer hunting. I have a hard time because I've gone coyote hunting a little bit. And... 
coyotes are a big problem in West Virginia. Mm -hmm. And even though it's legal and everything, I still have a hard time doing it. Cause I'm like, oh, it's just a coyote. And yes, yeah. but it's the, it's the whole mindset yeah. that I seen, still need to get past that just because they're cute and fluffy. Yeah. Doesn't mean that, you know. <laughs> I think I think the worst part about coyote hunting is that they remind me too much of dogs. And I'm yeah. just being straight up like they they're just I yeah. I can't we don't have a lot of coyotes. We I don't think the last coyote that was spotted in my part of Maryland where I hunt was like 1990 or something crazy like that. We we don't really have a coyote problem, but it is a big problem for deer hunters and I mm -hmm. I'm fully I'm fully you know, for anybody that would like to hunt coyotes, I just can't do it. I like, well, I yeah. think one thing, one thing that I've learned as a hunter, you know, and I, I'm, I'm a big hunter as well. I don't know if you know that about me. I'm a big hunter. I don't yeah. look like one, but, uh, I harvested my 50th deer last season. And so that was, I've been hunting since I was oh, six, seven years old. Yeah. I'm a big hunter. And, um, I had no idea. That yeah, was so cool. I'm a big hunter. And so, one thing that I've learned about hunting and this, especially the hunting community, is that there is nobody in this world that will care that that cares more about wildlife than most hunters. And I say most, mm -hmm. I mean ninety five percent of hunters. That five percent is what gets us bad, you know, hate, you know, bad comments. Right? You see on the news all the time, hunter does this, does that, and everybody's like, oh my god, these hunters are terrible, you know. So. They loop all of us yeah, into exactly, and I, I, I will say this: like I've hunted public land, I've hunted private land, I've hunted, you know, a lot in my lifetime to see a lot of great people, like people that you would see out in the grocery store, and you would, you'd talk to them, you would, you would say like that person doesn't hunt, but like those are the type of people I, I meet during hunting, you know, and it's, mm -hmm. it's so, so cool. The hunting. Hunting community very is very down to earth people. Exactly. And it, it, I think that's very important too. Is a, one thing that a lot of us hunters do, we don't go out necessarily to shoot them up, bang them up. You know, it's just like we go out there though to be grounded. And I think that's something that I love hunting is that, uh, you know, I might have a lot going on with my life and, you know, I might be very stressed about Tarkov and the wipe and stuff, but I can go out in the woods and I can sit on the ground and, you know, watch Disconnect. you know birds. Exactly. It makes me feel more, it makes me feel closer to earth, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I love that about hunting. So a little fun fact about Gino Vic. I don't know if you, was, I, I honestly, I'm sorry. Yeah. I never would have guessed that you, yeah, exactly. You that's no, but no, that's exactly that's what I was enough, saying. No, 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 it's okay. A lot of people are like, wait, you hunt. I'm like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a pretty big hunter. You know, it's the it's, it's same exact thing with golf. You know, it's a completely different hobby, but a lot of people look at me and they're like, you don't fucking golf, you know, but I'm a big golfer golf? too. Yeah. I'm a big golfer too. Yeah. That's oh another thing. <laughs> That's another no thing. Idea. Yeah. Have you ever thought about doing content around golfing? I've like, thought about like it. It's, yeah, something? I want to try and do more vlogs, but I'm I'm gonna be honest. I just, especially nowadays, I try in a in. A, I don't mean this in a bad way. When I get off stream, I try and escape content. I don't. I don't, I don't blame you. I I don't. It's I, like I would love to you know film my golf and my hunting, but the truth is those are the things that allow me to get away from my content creation. You know, so golf and then you is stick like a camera in front of it. Yeah, and, and then it like, takes away. Yeah, exactly. And I'm sure you can agree with this, right? Like video games, we used to look at as hobbies, and now, unfortunately, video games are my job. And I don't enjoy video games as much. You know, I used to play video games to get away from my life. You know, parents arguing in the background, put on my headset, play video games. You know, and now it's my job. It's like the last thing that I want to do outside of my job is play video games. You know, I go go to the gym. I go for a walk. You know. Whatever, maybe I get away from my computer, and I, I I feel like a lot of creators also feel that way. You know, I I don't know. Do you feel that way as well? Kind of getting away from everything. Yeah, it's like I could do it when, like, if I'm filming shooting my bow or something, I could do that for a little bit. But I've noticed that I eventually I get burned out of it mm -hmm. because it feels like I'm doing it as a job now. Yeah. And even though this is obviously you probably feel the same way, it's the best job to have. Yes. We are so fortunate, lucky to be able to do this. I mean, we play video games for a living. Mm -hmm. That's a crazy concept. Mm -hmm. But um, it does take away from the aspect of just 
and just relaxing and not worrying about our angles and making sure we look good. Yep. And, oh, we got to edit this and now we got to post it. And then we got to worry about if someone saying negative things yeah. about it. And it just, it takes away from just the disconnecting mm -hmm. when it's just constant content, 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 yep. and analytics. And it's a lot. 100%. It, it, you burn out from it. Yes, exactly. And that's why I love things like hunting, you know, They're like, I'm just truly, I, uh, the word for it is grounded. And my therapist has talked to me about this before. It's like, one thing that a lot of people deal with anxiety nowadays is that they aren't grounded. And what, what she meant by that is that you're essentially not connected. You don't feel like you're in your own body. You feel kind of like, a, you know, your thoughts are what you are, in a sense. And she said to ground yourself. And she said, whether that be walking, whether that be you know, doing something you love, going out to a coffee shop, being human, right? You ground yourself within the world, you know? And I think that's very important. That's why I love hunting so much. And I, I love that we just went off on that big tangent about that, but I, I I love that. Yeah, hunting's great. Golf is great. Getting rid of anxiety is great. Um, that's awesome. Um, I do got to ask, Vic, you've seen the balance of your platforms very well. What do you think of is some of the hardest to balance? Like whether it be platform type of content, what's some of the hardest? Honestly, right now for me, it's kick and being consistent with mm -hmm. it just because, you know, by the end of the week is when my kick streams start and it's just mm -hmm. like, man, I'm tired. I just want to just chill and watch some TV. Um, but it, it's a lot. And I hate, I don't know if you're like this. I hate editing. And I, I yep. hate my own voice. I hate looking at mm -hmm. myself because mm -hmm. I'm such a perfectionist. I'll sit there and mm -hmm. be like, your lips look a little funky. Your hair mm -hmm. looks really stupid today. Like, yep. and I'll just criticize myself the entire time, and yep. it's like, oh god, I don't, I don't want to look at myself. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. When I, I'm the same way, that's why I hired an editor. That's why I have an editor, <laughs> and I, I found somebody. It's very important to find an editor that is very like minded with you in in the content creation film. But I will send my editor like. He'll be like, I need an intro from me, boss. And I'm like, okay, what do you need? And like, oh, this is a customs clip. And I'll be like, I'll do that when I wake up tomorrow. And I'll wake up and I'll be in a raspy voice. I'll be like, what's up, guys? You know, today we're doing going customs, getting four kills. <laughs> and he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't care. He's just like, okay, it's good to go. I'm like, I would not have allowed that. Like, I would have waited until I woke up a few la hours later if it, I was in charge here. Uh, that's why it's very important to have a like-minded uh, editor. That's why I got an editor because I'm too much of a perfectionist. I hate it. Yeah. I hate it. No, but I agree. The the editing part is very very hard, um, especially in content creation nowadays. It's there's a lot to edit and a lot to, a lot of formats to edit in. You know, you TikTok, mm -hmm. you know, YouTube, right? Like back in the day, you could just record a YouTube video and put it on 23 platforms. <laughs> Nowadays, you got to be changing the resolution, switching all this stuff around. It's crazy. It's a lot of it's work. A lot. Yeah, it really mm -hmm. is. Um, I want to touch on the green hair slash highlights. Any story behind that? I know you've had green hair yeah. for a long time, but I want to talk about it. Like uh, any story behind the green hair? Yeah, the person that did my hair fucked it up. I used to have blue and purple, mm -hmm. and blue wants to stay in my hair, and it's such a bitch to get out. But I went to someone new, because uh -huh. my area is not the best with hair people. Yeah. So I went to get the blue removed, and my hair turned green. And I'm one of those people, it's like, it takes a lot to make me say something if I'm not happy with your service, because I, I don't want to come across as a Karen, you know, yeah. that whole thing. It's like, oh, That's that white bitch is complaining. Yeah. So, <laughs> Um, they, uh, I ended up calling them. I'm like, listen, I'm so unhappy with this. Can you please like try to get this green out? And they're like, yep, but that'll be another hundred dollars. I'm like, what? You know, so I That's dyed it crazy. green just because yeah. I was like, just to make it match. Mm. And I hated it. I wore it in a bun. I, I hated the green. And then I started getting compliments with it. And, uh, the new girl that I go to that does my hair, she absolutely refuses to, have me do any other color she's like it looks good with your skin tone and it just it looks good and i'm like all right and like i live you know in west virginia yeah. and some parts in west virginia are a little uh, old-fashioned in the sense of yeah. coloring your hair and tattoos yeah but i get the older generation compliments me all the time with my hair 
So I'm like, man, even the little old men and ladies are liking this. That's awesome. So are, <laughs> yeah. have you slowly started to like it now that you, you've gotten so many compliments yeah, and all of that stuff? It, it helped with the self-esteem. Mm. And I think, too, whenever I started dyeing my hair green, green was still a weird color to go to. Yeah. A lot of people do the reds, the blues, the purples. But now it's more normal to mm. have green hair, I feel like. So, yeah. 100%. Yeah, that's, and that's my awesome. favorite color's green anyway, so it works. Mm. So, well, <laughs> so if you were to, were to have another color hair, it would be blue and blue and purple, you said? Probably because my hair won't hold red at all. I always mm. thought red was such a pretty color, and my hair will There's not do it. There's a girl in my gym that dyes her hair like every other week, and it's like oh, God. one week it would be. Just... It was like one week it's like purple. This week it was red, like the the brightest red i've ever seen and how I, does she get the color out i don't know find out for You're, me if you yeah don't mind. yeah I, let, that will be my in how i guess you know that would be yeah <laughs> i don't know no but I, like this girl will come to the gym with like a completely different color hair from last week i'm like how the fuck did you do that <laughs> uh for one and then this week like i said it was just a bright red and i'm not gonna i'll be honest i've never been the biggest fan like, it's not my my place to judge, right? I just have never been... My mom has always wanted to get me blonde highlights and stuff. I just didn't... I, I just have never been a fan of that, you know? And I, I, I've i never been a fan of, you know, people... Or uh, dyeing your hair. Or, well, dyeing my hair. And mm -hmm. I I saw the red, and I actually kind of like it. It was, like, slow... Like, that's really cool. I like the green, <laughs> too. I like... um. I really like the the silver highlights. Have you? Had, my oh. sister did silver highlights one time, and I thought it was really fucking cool. On the um, right person, it looks really good. Yeah, one hundred percent. No, I, I I'm slowly I think transforming into somebody that likes you know dyed hair. Like that's really really cool. So um, I had to ask about it. I had to ask. Um, you have done away from the hair and stuff. You've done some pretty crazy stream goals. Uh, besides, you know, earlier you mentioned you lit a Slim Jim on fire. You've done some pretty crazy goals. What are some of the craziest things you've done? Um, the one that I see people talk the most about in my chat is when I ate a tarantula. Mm -hmm. That thing was the worst thing I put in my mouth, and I've had some unfortunate things in my mouth before. But the <laughs> spider would definitely be one of the worst. Yeah. I hated it. It was disgusting. And, uh, it was it was bad. That sounds I disgusting. A spider? Yeah. yeah. And the scorpion. Different types of grasshoppers mm. and worms. The yeah. first bug I had was a few weeks ago, and it was a grasshopper, and it was covered oh. in chocolate. And it was good. Ooh. I actually liked it. It, it was good? Yep. I actually liked it. Um, don't tell chat that because I tried to make a face that I was displeased, but listen, man, it was a sub goal. They, they gave it. I tried to act like I didn't like it, but I actually, I, Oh, okay. Yeah. In that case, your chat needs to get you to eat chocolate covered super worms. Yeah. No. Yeah. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I don't know if I get him to eat worms. <laughs> mm. Mm. Um. Mm. Do you like white chocolate? I'm, I don't know why I'm not the biggest fan of white chocolate. I don't know why. Well, I mean, I'll I like it. Like if if somebody gives me some white chocolate, I'll I'll eat it. But just a, like a milk chocolate, I, I I'll say. Ever since going to the gym and realizing like health benefits of certain stuff, dark chocolate mm -hmm. is so fucking good for you, Vic. Yeah. And it's it's really good. Like um, mm -hmm. dark chocolate pretzels are my favorite. One hundred percent. Those are good. Yeah, yeah, those are really good. I love dark <laughs> chocolate stuff. Um, but moving on. Uh, we, I wanted to go to the throwback section, and this is the one thing that all these creators love doing. So, we not if, me. <laughs> don't worry, the I didn't cringe, get it, man. I, I didn't get anything. That, <laughs> that, I didn't get anything too embarrassing. Okay, but I did find too a few things. Yeah, I did find a few things. I'm gonna turn on my camera. I'm gonna stream my screen. No. Um, oh let me let me pull this up. We're going to uh, we're gonna do this. Uh. Give me two seconds. Uh, we just got to pull up all these tweets and stuff. I, yeah, like I said, I found some very old tweets. Um, some very old clips as well. Uh, if you care. I found some very old clips. Sure, um, let's see the cringe fest. Huh? Yep. And, uh, yeah, so that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to live stream this. And then we're going to oh pull this up. God. And then we're going to go here. And we are good to go. Um, my cat. This is your first ever tweet, by the way. 
um, December 6, 2016. Uh, one day oh before... A little fun fact about this. This is one day before my 15th birthday. Oh. Yeah, I turn. I was turning 15 this year. Yeah. Oh, I found your cat. Um, and mood. it just said mood. Um, this was your first ever tweet from what I could find. So, yeah. I mean, nothing much to this tweet. It was just okay. funny that I, I found it. And I was like, you know what? This is a good first tweet. I'm going to put it. I will say... There have been some Not people on. There have been some people on the podcast uh, in the past that their first tweet is definitely something that I, 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 I don't think it was bad in any sense, but it's definitely I don't want to embarrass my guests with these tweets, you know. So this was a good first tweet, you know. It's a cat mood, you know, great tweet. And then secondly, um, moving on, that was your first ever tweet. And then let's talk about your growth. I don't know if you realize this, but this was 200 <laughs> subscribers. I found this tweet. And uh, you tagged a bunch of people here. And I found this 201 subscribers back in February 24th, 2017. <laughs> oh, man. And then you had YouTuber help say congrats back in 2017. I found this. I thought this was really, really cool. Hopefully I'm not like, uh, hopefully this isn't something you didn't want to be seen. But we found some videos here. Two th 200 subscribers, though, Vic. Look how far you've come. You're at yeah. like 20K on YouTube now. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Cool. That's crazy. And then, like you said, <laughs> you did, um, you used to do, uh, like, you said makeup tutorials and stuff like that? Yeah. These are, these yeah. are the, the ponytail ones. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to, uh, get out of that. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got a selfie, of course. I had to get a selfie. <laughs> Your favorite editing buddy. This is 2019. Uh, this is uh, you and your parrot. I don't. What's what's this parrot's name? Popples. Popples. Yeah. That's a really cute name. Also, that's the hair that you liked, right? Uh, she was going through it at that time period, but yeah, I like that color. <laughs> that's a really cool color too. That that is really cool. And then you have a teal bird, Popples. That's really yeah. cute. I I had to find that. I was your favorite editing buddy. Back in November twenty first, twenty nineteen. That's that's such a that's such a good tweet, Vic. That's such a good tweet. Now moving on, we have a few Tarkov clips. Okay, so this oh, one <laughs> we have the build in the anti the anti climax. This is a hilarious clip. Um, I'm gonna turn off the music. Actually, give me two seconds. We're gonna turn Did off you the music. Do headphone warning because yeah. I was very loud. Yeah, yeah, back I, in got the day. I got you. I got you. I got you. Headphone <laughs> warning for anybody. Uh, I, I have the little audio adjustment so I can adjust it. But I don't know if you remember this clip. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> I'm big time Tarkov Chad. I could do all of the Tarkov things. There's nobody in there. <laughs> that did nothing. All right, hold on. I don't know what where I'm at. <laughs> also, so this was this was two years ago, um, and I would like to point out. I assume you're a lot more experienced now, Vic, with everything. Um, <laughs> you seem so. You don't know where you're going in factory. I was like, this is such a perfect first clip. This is so Man. good. This is so good, and uh, I love I love the build up here. You are like hyping yourself up. Big time in the dark. Every, factory. Everybody can relate to this, Vic. Cat. I guarantee it. Everybody and their all... brother can relate to this. I swear to God, that is that is so so funny. That is that is hilarious. Um, uh, why didn't I bring a flashlight? <laughs> I have a lot of uh, questions for past me. I don't know why I didn't bring a flashlight. That's okay. <laughs> I I don't know either, but the, the, we you were rocking the bear AK here. Oh, yeah. Stay yeah. tuned to the branding. Yeah, Let's exactly. <laughs> exactly. And then the next clip, I just now realized that this is my favorite. Oh, my the, God. No. <laughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, we got him. And I'm just going to roll the clip. This is my favorite clip on Twitch. But I've fallen for that joke a few times. So if it makes you feel any better, I've fallen We've for that. We've worked over the years. Have you noticed? People have gotten really creative. <laughs> yeah, they have. They have. I, I, I hit people with the Sea of Thieves joke. Like what game do you what what game's that pirate game that was like see if these on like see if these nuts fit in your mouth, buddy? Oh and they all God. get pissed. I love it. I love it. This is one of my favorite clips. I had to go in the throwback. You know the throwback section, Vic. We had to we had to show some great clips here. 
We had to show some great clips. That's awesome. Um, moving on, we are going to go back uh, to the camera and then stop streaming this and then pull up this and then uh, bingo, bango. I'm getting faster with this, by the way. I was, I've been so slow past podcasts, so I'm glad that we're doing good now. Um, <laughs> we're going to move on to the life and mental health section. Um, I've mentioned a few times in this podcast, Vic, I want to bring up mental health. You seem to always be there for others and be a safe place for so many uh, have you always been that way, like um, with your mental health and everything? Like, have you always been that that way as a person? For the most part, like I've brought it up, but uh, growing up, mental health was definitely not a thing. You mm. know, small town, West Virginia, we don't talk about mental health. Mm -hmm. um, physical health and those that kind of aspect has always been more normalized in society. Mm. So mental health's not really a thing. But as I got older and just working on myself and um experiences that i went through um with mental health yeah i've kind of like tried to start talking about it more 100 percent and make I, it more normal yeah and i feel like i can relate to that in a sense you know i feel like something that's not talked about a lot and we're actually i have a question about it, is men's mental health you know i was kind of grown up to be strong and you know be there for others and you know don't cry and, you know don't be a bitch you know all of that stuff right like that's how i was kind of raised you know my friends were taught the same my a lot of men are taught the same you know that's just how we're taught and it's something to where i wanted to kind of break that barrier i feel like there's a barrier right now with um with a lot of that stuff you know like mental health and stuff right is the fact that we have these barriers in place that so many people are afraid to get broken because of they, they're afraid of who might go at them. You know, if that makes sense, right? Like the Being fact that I exactly a lot of people in today's world are don't want to be vulnerable nowadays, you know, especially men, you know, and it's I'm glad that you have found that you have broken that barrier between, you know, mental health and being a human, right? Like, because that's very important, you know, especially in small town, West Virginia, to keep keep advocating for that you know it's very very important um so i'm glad you brought that up uh if there's one thing that uh that if there is one thing that has changed as a person the most what do you think it is okay so this is like a question i haven't really asked my guests for me it's the support my mom has given me that's what's changed me the most in my life i gotta ask you though um where what about you anything in particular what has changed you the most in your life um honestly and it kind of goes back to the whole men's mental health and everything mm -hmm. um <laughs> sorry i've been working on this so sorry no it's all like... good <laughs> no it's but, all good um, well growing up um i went through some stuff mm -hmm. but the one person that has always had my back through everything i've known this guy since when we were literally babies my mm -hmm. mom used to uh babysit him when his mom would go to work and everything there's pictures of me and him as little babies holding hands and stuff oh um, that's would awesome. be my best friend okay and he was um even though i was a girl he always included me in um stuff because i was a tomboy yeah. i had four younger brothers and stuff so mm -hmm. i didn't really have a female role model or a female yeah. influence i always felt more comfortable around guys and stuff um and playing football and everything and he'd always even during the phases where ooh girls have cooties yeah he'd always have my back he'd always be like he would stand up for me and he'd be like you you be nice to victoria that's mm -hmm. my best friend and he always had my back through everything and um we kind of drifted apart after high school because mm. he got into the wrong crowd and everything and then i had um some a really bad situation happened that i just kind of like you know yeah running from my past kind of deal and I stopped talking to him, and um, unfortunately, a couple years ago, um, he passed away. Mm. So it's just part of me just kind of feels, you know, gone. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't know if you believe in like the whole twin flame stuff and I'm everything. A firm believer. But if that yeah, is a thing. He was my platonic twin flame, mm. you know. And part of that is just gone now. So I hold on to some of that regret that. When it was time for him to have a friend and mm. needed someone, I wasn't there. Mm. I was too focused on running away from stuff that I wasn't there. And even though his death wasn't my fault, I still, you know, part of me feels like yeah. I should have been there. You know, mm. he had been there for me my whole entire life. And um, when it was my turn, I kind of dropped the ball, mm -hmm. you know? So, I don't know. Now I just kind of 
seeing what he went through and hearing about some of the stuff that he went through and I wasn't there, I just realized more. It's kind of a, an eye opener as to what mm -hmm. men go through. And I think it's very important that women also stand up for men and men stand up for women and to yeah. kind of break this barrier and I, I hate all the time you go on Twitter and it's just always men versus women on yeah. everything and I would just like to get to the point that we just have each other's back you know you stand yeah. up for me if you see someone attacking me you stand up for me and I'll have to worry about being called a simp or yeah. all this dumb shit it's like just standing up for people not because of gender not all this stuff just stand up for mm. other people and um that's why I've always just kind of had like a soft spot for men's mental health mm -hmm. because I know it's not ever acknowledged. If I trip and fall at a grocery store, I'm going to have more people come up and help me up yeah. and cater to my feelings versus if a guy trips and falls, more likely you'll get pointed at and laughed at and get up, you pussy. And it's just, yeah. I see the differences. And even though I'll never truly understand some of the things that guys go through and you may never truly understand the things that women go yeah. through, we acknowledge it and we see it and mm -hmm. just kind of help each other you yeah 100 like, i feel like that no you're you're being very real right now because the whole like men versus women thing i've never made sense and it's become a lot worse now nowadays especially with with the culture that content creation is you know i, I i'm just gonna be straight up honest with you i saw a tweet of yours um probably a few months ago now it was like a, a quote it was or it was just like a tweet that you said you know if you stand up for women you're a feminist but if you stand up for for men you're a misogynist or, or something mm -hmm. along those lines and that that really hit home for me and a lot of people right because i very similar to you um i kind of grew up with my sister being my role model and so i have my like when I got a therapist, I got a female therapist because it's easier for me to talk to women than it is for me to talk to men, you know? And I, I have some of my best friends are men, but I, it's very hard for me to talk to them because it doesn't feel like they care as much as my sister would. And so one thing, my biggest role model was my sister. And so I have always distinctively or instinctively um, stood up for everybody for one but mostly women and i see so many times especially in this content creation field you know women are you know it's just disgusting you know how it is unfortunately there's a lot of it nowadays people say some really creepy stuff men are just absolutely like it's just disgusting you know twitch especially content creation especially women are treated very very poorly and a lot of the times when i would often defend these women i would then be called a simp or a white knight and that never made any sense to me because my entire life i grew up defending my sister you know if my sister had a dude break her you know break her heart i would be the first one to step in and say val you are the greatest fucking girl on this planet you know like this is like you need to wake up and i was always there for my sister i was never called a white knight or I was never called a simp for standing up for my sister, you know? And that's something that I don't think a lot of people realize in today's world is that, you know, it, the content creation it, as a whole is just so negative nowadays. And it's, you're 100% right, right? It's like, it feels more of a, like a men versus women issue nowadays. And I don't like that, you know? And it's, yeah. it's, it's caused a divide, you know? Because like you said, right? You stand up for women, you're a feminist. And if you stand up for men, you're a misogynist. And it just doesn't make sense, right? We're all humans. We all bleed the same, the same blood. You know, we all, we all put our pants on the same way is what I always say. You know, I put my pants on the same way that you do and everybody else in chat does. And I think it's very important nowadays that we remember that we're human, especially in the content creation field. So I, I'm very glad that you brought that up. And I'm very sorry for your loss. I hope you can, I hope you can, uh, I, I always say this w with people that have, have lost somebody. I, I don't know if you're religious. It, it's not none of my business, but as somebody who is um, slightly religious, I always tell people that no matter what, they're always with you. And I, I'm a firm believer in that. And uh, I hope you can find some, uh, find some peace and, uh, and, and not, not be filled with regret. Okay. I, I, I hope you know that Vic, you're a good person. And I, I, you, I mean that, um, uh, you're a big mental health advocate. I have seen you talk a lot about men's mental health, which we just talked about. Um, what's a message you would like to share to not only the viewers in here, but maybe someone struggling right now? 
that's a tough one because I feel like everyone preaches, oh, just talk to someone. Just mm-hmm. just call the number. That's not as easy to yeah. just go out and talk to someone. It's very difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, but just from personal experience, it, um, it's a lot of self-reflecting and still going through the emotions, acknowledging that you're valid in them and feeling the way that you do. But it's all about learning to put in the love for yourself that you would for someone else. Mm -hmm. And that one was a hard one for me to do because, like, I'll stand up for my friends all day long. You know, if I see someone attack my friend, I am, like, right there. But for myself, I I wouldn't stand up for myself. So when I started putting in the time of even just little things, like, I don't know, going out and buying myself a cup of coffee or something, Mm -hmm. doing things that make me happy. Yeah. And... And, or if it's like playing video games, just go and play video games for a little bit to distract or just it's still acknowledge, don't like suppress it, but just distract your brain because our brains are not mm-hmm. very nice to us sometimes, but mm-hmm. do things that make you feel happy, you know, yeah. like to boost your mood up. Um, something that helps me too is I'll watch streamers that have a similar attitude as me, like, you know, yeah. really just energetic and all over the place. Yeah. And that inspires me to be like that and it gets me out of that funk so Mm. it's very easy once you're in that mindset to spiral and just to sit in those feelings and they just breed more negativity Mm. so it's a lot and i don't think it's as simple as just call this number and talk to a friend it's a lot of a lot of inner work honestly exactly men it's very difficult to go to therapy because you'll get made fun of and oh trust me when i first mentioned i went to therapy i was like everybody belittled me like what do you need to go you're a streamer man like you're what do you need therapy for it's like dude like i i have my problems just like you you know just like just like everybody on this earth you know and i I wanted to work on them and that's what i did um speaking about therapy i'm glad you mentioned you know get a coffee thing and i i would like to point out for anybody struggling right now i hope you understand that you're never alone for one um you will never be alone whether you it, it be somebody like vic or myself to distract you or you know for you to message us we would probably we would love a message okay and i i say this to my friends i say this to my viewers i would much rather you message me at three o'clock in the morning telling me about your feelings than never getting the message from me again and i can 100 percent confirm about that it's very important that you understand that you're never alone as a person um but i'm glad you brought up the coffee part because my therapist um a few few months ago i was i said i was struggling with motivation or not motivation i was i said i was struggling with having a routine and so she said make a make a list on your phone and i was like okay make a list like what do you want me to do you know like uh 20 follower goal or something like that she was like no do everything write a list of everything that you're going to do today including waking up and i'm like what like that's so easy what do you mean waking up she's like you know as much as i would love to say that waking up is easy for so many people it's not so i started writing down everything so you should see my list i send them to friends all the time you know get breakfast get a cup of coffee add extra uh, add extra sugar one time or or, you know add extra creamer you know or like (laughs) I'll, I'll write my day the day and I'll do everything, even the simplest, like the most simple stuff. Like, um, I remember one time I sent my list to a, a guy friend of mine and I, I had on there shave. And he was like, dude, why the fuck on your day thing do you have shave? And I'm like, dude, I don't think you realize how hard it is for me to shave some days. You know, like some days I don't want to shave, right? Like, he's like, oh, I got it. You know, I don't think he really understood. But uh, it's, and it's funny you mentioned that, right? It's very important. Uh, especially if you're struggling to to do the bare minimum because that's okay right whether it be wake up and you breathe and you sit in bed all day you cry whatever it may be it's it's better than it's better than the alternative in my opinion you know do something whether it just be breathing or you know doing something very light it's very important you know and i'm sure you can you're a big advocate for that, Vic, and I, I, I appreciate that. Um, let's talk a little I bit. Of, you. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk a little bit about life. Um, you seem to have a lot of animals throughout the years. What are some of your favorite moments with your pets? Well, my favorite pet that I ever had, um, she was a little fox, and um, my dad's friend found her. She was abandoned by her mom or something, mm. and uh, brought it over to my dad because my dad loves animals and stuff, and he's very well known in hunting and trapping and stuff. Mm. And whenever he brought that little fox to uh, my dad, I begged and begged and begged him to let me keep her. 
And so some of my best memories are taking my little fox and we'd go to the creek together and we'd just sit by the creek and just hang out. And her favorite snacks were uh, yogurt and hot dogs. So I'd just sit there and just feed her hot dogs and it'd make my mom so mad because <laughs> she would get uh, food, you know, with coupons and stuff mm. because there's five of us. So she had to stock up and everything because we ate a lot of food and I would go and take the food that she got for us and feed it to my <laughs> fox. Awesome. But yeah, and then I trained her to attack my brothers. Like maybe not full on attack, because then I'd get in trouble. <laughs> yeah. But like you know, I, well, I was the only girl. I had to defend myself, so I would train my fox to be like, "Hey, bite this brother. He was mean to me today." <laughs> <That's> so, <laughs> so awesome. those are some of my best memories. <laughs> That's awesome. So you had a f the, a fox is such a rare animal to have. I love foxes. I've always had those little like. I'll get on my YouTube from time to time. It's like uh, uh, petting my pet fox. And it, it's like a dude that goes out in his little kennel. And he, the fox is just making noises as soon as he hops in. He's making all these happy noises. And he starts petting. It's like a damn dog, you know? It's so, uh -huh. it's so, so cute. That's so, so awesome. Um, I did have to ask, how many pets have you had? Oh, God. Have you I done a count? Even... Too many to count, and I grew up <laughs> around farms and stuff, so I had goats, I had yeah. chickens, dogs, rabbits. I mean, um, my mom used to keep rabbits in cages, mm. and they she had a hard time keeping them alive, so she just let them loose. Probably wasn't the smartest decision, but they just started breeding, and there was just little bunnies around uh, my house growing up, so there was always rabbits around, so I always loved animals, even as a kid, so yeah. I would try to catch them, and... It was fun. That's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. Um, getting yeah. back to the mental health side of things, a lot of creators deal with a lot of hidden mental health issues. Uh, creators often struggle with burnout and confidence issues. Uh, what are some things you think you struggle with as a creator? Like, be open and honest here. I know for me, I struggle with a lot of... Um, I used to struggle with this. I don't anymore. I used to struggle with a lot of comparison issues. I would compare myself to literally everybody but myself. And I realized, past year or so... Uh, that the only person I should be comparing myself to is myself yesterday. And that's what I do every single day now. Um, but that's, you know, a little openness about me. Is there anything that you feel like that you struggle with as a creator? Uh, yeah, there's quite a bit that I've been working on. I'm a huge people pleaser mm -hmm. and I feel like everyone needs to like me. And if I feel like they don't, then it's like, okay, I'm going to work really hard to get their validation. Mm -hmm. Maybe I did something they didn't like. I'll change that about myself and I'll bend over backwards to be the person that people want me to be. Mm -hmm. I'm getting away from that. And there'll be times I don't think that I'm good enough to be a content creator or I'll get the, the type of messages that you probably expect as a woman i'll get the oh people only want to see see you naked or want your only yeah. farmer's link and stuff like that but then i i actually i have a folder of saved messages that i've gotten that are from men and um they'll be like oh uh, thank you for being a safe place thank you for being entertaining and it'll it'll point out specific things like that like you give me a space to just be myself thank you for just the banter because mm. after work i just want to relax and you we just shit talk each other like mm. it's stuff like that it's like okay maybe i'm not you know yeah 100 I, I gotta shit. i gotta ask and this is a very personal question if you don't want to answer this do you go to therapy because that's literally a, another thing that my therapist recommended is yes. take all of the <laughs> take all of the nice messages because i told her i'm a people pleaser I want everybody to like me. She's like, take all the nice messages and read one every single morning or every single day. You know, just take a collection of them. So I have a I have a little folder as well of a bunch of nice things that people have said to me. And it's really helped me through some of my darkest days, you know? And I, I'm glad that it's helped you. It's like, I had to ask, because like, a lot of what you do is like, what therapists <laughs> recommend. And I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. I've been working on myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing. That's a really good yeah. thing. That's so so awesome. Um, that's that's so so awesome. Now I struggle with a lot of burnout. Um, and similar to burnout, a lot of us streamers suffer from imposter syndrome. Do you know what that is, Vic? You know what imposter yes. syndrome is? Uh, and it, for anybody in chat that might not know, it's basically the feeling of not deserving as much as you have. Essentially, um, do you sometimes experience this like I do? Because I experience oh it a lot. Yes, especially around drops. 
because yep. our numbers are been inflated. Mm-hmm. I try not to look at it at all. Mm-hmm. I look at the analytics after for business purposes mm-hmm. and stuff. But during, I try not because I'll be like, oh my god, this many people are watching. What if I, you know, what if I mess up? And I'm not the best player in Tarkov. I yeah. think everyone can unanimously agree. I'm not <laughs> Nobody the best. is. Nobody's good at Tarkov, Vic. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh god, I don't deserve this. Like, mm-hmm. I can name 500 other people that deserve this more than me, and it's just. It's a lot, but yeah, I, I get that way too, especially when it's from your typical numbers. And I've been very fortunate to have a, a, a slow and steady growth. You know, mm-hmm. like I, even though I, I've accomplished a lot, I didn't go from, you know, super small to super big, like out of nowhere. Yeah. I think if that would have happened to me, I think I probably would have quit content creation. Yeah. But I'm very fortunate to at every step of the way, learn things about myself, learn what I need to work on on myself and content, and then just kind of, I grow with my platforms, if Mm -hmm. that makes sense. Like my platforms are growing, I'm growing as a person, and I think they've all been aligned really well to where I've been able to process things a little bit better, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. It's, It's like a quote that I always tell myself, you know, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey, right? And I'm a firm believer in that, and content creation is, you need to you need to enjoy the journey just as much as you enjoy the possible destination. You know, whether it be a hundred subs that you want on Twitch and you get a hundred subs, you need to enjoy that zero to one hundred grind rather than enjoy, oh, I got a thousand or a hundred subs. Woo. Like enjoy that. Don't get me wrong. It's a mm-hmm. huge accomplishment, but also enjoy the 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 journey because that's what motivates you to, yeah. to want more, you know? And uh that's awesome. Um now we talked about like uh some things that uh, uh I said that, you know, you get or you've gotten help with a therapist or whatever, you, you know, a lot of that stuff that you've mentioned, um, whether it be get a cup of coffee and stuff uh, with mental health. Uh, what are some things that you've done to maybe help your mental health other than, you know, the cup of coffee and the list making and stuff like that? So many people has, have their things, right? Like some people cold showers, you know, what are some of your things? definitely going out in the woods and just Mm -hmm. disconnecting turning off my phone not looking at comments under my posts and stuff and just being with nature as corny as that sounds Mm -hmm. and when i do come back to it i'll watch streamers like you or other streamers that are mental health and just wholesome or high energy that kind of also brings up my vibrations too i guess if that makes sense like i'm definitely someone that i soak in all this stuff that's around me so if i'm around negative people i'm going to be negative so i try to be very picky now who I let in my inner circle and it's tough for I'm sure you probably have dealt with this too where you want to be a friend to everybody yep. and be there for everyone but it's a tough balance of still doing that but also guard yourself because yes. unfortunately it is what it is people don't have the best intentions and they're going to try to bring you down <laughs> mm-hmm. so I've, I've tried to find that balance of helping people and being there and being a friend but also very picky of who I let close to me. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah. stuff like that, that. That That's really, that's really cool. I've said so many quotes to stream Vic and I'm going to say another one because I, when I was going through a lot of rough times, I would look at quotes. I don't know why, but quotes always helped me and what you're explaining. And I wholeheartedly agree. It was a quote. It was like, if you're friends with everyone, you're an enemy to yourself. And I am mm-hmm. a, I, it's just such a hard hitting quote for me because I want to be friends with everybody. I want everybody to like me, you know, and you, you said that you, it raises your vibrations, right? Like that's the truth because I read in a book recently and it's called, um, good vibes, good life. And it talks about the law of vibration. It's very similar to, um, uh, law of attraction. You attract what you reflect type thing, but law of vibration is essentially, uh, what you vibrate into the world or what you what your vibe is and what vibe you give off is oftentimes what reflects back onto you. And so what I mean by that is if you are are you have good vibes and you have, you know, uh, a good vibration, so to speak, people out in the world are going to naturally vibrate towards you when you like good people. Right. If you're good vibrations, you'll attract good, good people. Right. And same thing with negative people. Right. If you are negative towards somebody or something or yourself, you'll oftentimes get people in your life that are often 
negative. And I can personally relate to this. Um, this is a little deep, but um, there have definitely been, over the course of my four years of streaming, there have definitely been some people in my life that have, have well, in my streaming life, that is, uh, that have left my stream because I was too positive. And people have told me that. Um, I have received DMs on Twitter. I've received DMs on uh, TikTok that they can't watch me anymore because I'm too positive. And I never really understood that. Did I change for it? No. Um, because in my opinion, there's no such thing as too positive. Um, I'm sure you can agree with that. There's no such thing as, you know, too good vibes, right? Like, that's not a thing, right? Like, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, there there is what I like to call um, toxic positivity. And what I mean by that is like, the people that you go to and it says, oh, it's going to get better. You know, uh, it, it'll get better eventually. You, you'll be right. You know, like that's the shit that I don't need to hear when I'm going through something. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> if, if, if I'm going through some rough times and some stress and I go to somebody and they're like, it'll be better tomorrow or it will be better tomorrow. You know, uh, uh, a year from now, uh, you won't be stressing about this. You know, it's like, it dude, feels very invalidating. Ah, <laughs> I don't need to hear that, man. Like, I love yeah. a motherfucker. When I go to them and they tell me, you're valid for feeling that way, Gina. I'm like, oh, I love you. Like, like <laughs> I love you. You know, like I am such a, I love people who validate my feelings, you know, whether they're wrong or right. And they'll tell me how it is. I love people who tell me not, uh, I love people that just tell me that my feelings are valid because as mm -hmm. men and I, we just, we just talked about it. I've never experienced that. You know, when I would go to my dad for things, I'd get, I'd get told to suck it up. You know, my mom, my mom's a little a little better with that. She She's slowly uh, understanding anxiety and mental health and stuff. But my parents are older, right? Nobody really validated my feelings. So when I hear people validate my feelings, it feels so much better, you know? And it, it's just, it's yeah. such, it's so important <laughs> to have those friends. Um, it's so, it's so, so important. Now, I love this question, this next question. Um, if I know anything about you, Vic, uh, you almost always try and be the bigger person. Um, my mom would call it taking the high road. Um, I'm, I'm a firm believer in that. Uh, for so many, though, that's so, so hard. What would you tell someone uh, who want to better themselves and to take the high road? Because it's hard. It's very difficult. Yes. Because I am a very angry girl, okay? Mm -hmm. I there's times and like my temper gets the best of me and it's like people that are being shitty i want to just be like well you know fight them you know yeah. um or, or call them out on it and stuff and it's very challenging it's a weird balance because there's that fine line of taking the high road versus just taking the abuse mm -hmm. and i feel like a lot of the times when those of us that take the high road we're constantly dealing with people's abuse and we got to stay quiet because mm -hmm. and be the bigger person yeah and i haven't found that quite balanced mindset yet of yeah. yes still take the high road but i'm not putting up with your bullshit anymore like yeah. fuck you stay out of my energy yeah 100 <laughs> so it's it's weird and i don't know if i have really any hardcore like amazing advice over it but it's definitely and it's so situational too mm -hmm. like yeah. if it's someone in my youtube comments that said i had a big nose or something i yeah. don't need to put them on full blast on social media and be like these this piece of shit saying i have a big nose yeah okay you think i have a big okay whatever move on taking the high road i don't need to acknowledge this whatever but if there's someone like dragging your name through the mud yeah. and spreading this narrative and these lies it, there's that fine line of like just ignoring it but also addressing it so mm -hmm. this doesn't happen again and people know like yeah. don't fuck with me like <laughs> yeah 100 percent. So. i think it's very important that people um i think it's very important that you show who you are 24 7 you know nine or seven days a week right like i think it's very important that you show who you are in if you are to to necessarily lash out or whatever whatever it would say you know if somebody's you know dragging your name through the mud or whatever it's very important to still say true to yourself and like in that message, if you are to lash out or make a comment about it, still be yourself, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and say true to who you are, because I, I feel like a lot of people nowadays turn, and I, I discussed this earlier, is that negativity turns people into someone they're not, you know, a lot of times you see it a lot nowadays is that so many people 
will turn the negative thoughts that they have and and put them back on to other people you know and it's very disheartening seeing so many people suffer and i i don't mean this in a bad way but so many people suffer with mental health issues and it's just like you don't know what people are going through you know if i if i lash out to somebody that's why i, I I'm very rare for doing this, I feel like. A lot of people will come into my chat from TikTok and they'll say mean things. And there are some times where I'll, uh, like, I'm in a bad mood. I'll be like, yo, dude, like, stop talking to me. I, I fucked your mom last night or some shit like that, right? Like, it's something like that. But there are often a lot of times that people will come to me and they'll say some mean things. And I'm like, dude, I hope you genuinely are doing okay. You know, and I hope you're doing well at home or I hope everything at home is doing OK or that you get the help you need. And so many people are like, dude, that's, that's like that's like they're, they're always like, well, you know, you can't really do that. Like I had one time there was a guy and he would come in probably he came in every day for two weeks and he came in and he would just say some mean things. And I said, dude, you are the most miserable person I have ever met in my life. And he goes, wait, what do you mean? And I was like, you just, you don't know how to deal with yourself. You are so afraid of your, your own problems that you make other problems for others. You know, and I told him, I was like, I would recommend if you, if you can talk to somebody or, or consider therapy and a guy in my chat, he, he then speaks up a long time viewer and he was like, See, and I don't think it's really fair for you to tell somebody to get therapy. I think that's very rude. And I was like, what's rude about getting therapy? You know, and it was one of those, unfortunately, it's one of those guys that doesn't really, you know, you're weak if you go to therapy. And he, he kind of understood once I explained it to him. I was like, I think therapy is something that, and I say this all the time, I don't think therapy is something everybody should have, but everybody should, uh, I, I, let me rephrase that. I don't think therapy is everything is, every. I don't think therapy is something that everybody needs but everyone should have one you know because even the happiest people need somebody to talk to sometimes mm -hmm. you know i think that's very important right and i i i you know we've gone down so many deep holes this podcast <laughs> but i'm a firm believer that's that like advice. if you yeah i i just i i'm my mom has always taught me you know treat the negativity with positivity and that's how i've always been taught you know so many people have attacked me over the years and so many people have you know, you know, spread spread some false information about me and said some things to my friends or whatever it may be, right? And so many people have, have come after me. It's just, it doesn't make any sense to me because all I'm trying to do is just make people feel less alone. You know, that's all I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to hurt you. Like, like the day, Vic, I'm telling you, the day that you see me belittle somebody on my Twitter, you need to DM me and tell me to delete <laughs> it and tell me like, are you okay? You. Okay, because I'm not doing that. It's not me. I don't. I don't, I, the, here's how I look at life. Everybody in, in today, tomorrow, you know, the past, they've done what's best for them in the current moment or what they think is best for them. You know, if somebody, and I, I, I hate this, I hate saying it like this, but let's say, um, you know, somebody in chat was in a, a serious relationship and the other person cheated on them and they're heartbroken and they're reasonably heartbroken. And I always tell them, you know, at least for one, at least it happened now. So you aren't wasting your time, you know, wasting your time no longer. And I, I'm, I'm such a firm believer in that people are going to do what they think is best in the current moment. And if what they think is best is wrong to you, I have no right to tell them what is best for them. If that makes any sense, right? Like if somebody, if somebody's in a serious relationship and they get cheated on, you got to understand that that person, the partner, I somehow thought that that was the best thing to do was to cheat. And it's unfortunate, but you can't change what people think is best for them. You know, and I'm a huge advocate and I'm, I'm a, I'm a huge advocate for something that is very rare nowadays. And it's called forgiveness. So many That's people tough. don't want to forgive, <laughs> right? Like I have been, I have been, my friends come to me sometimes about this and like, Gina, how do you forgive somebody? And I'm just like, dude, like I, Steve Harvey said it best, and he was he said, um, "Holding a grudge is like drinking poison and expecting your enemy to die." You know, and I'm a firm believer in that. Right? Is you can hold a grudge and you can hate somebody, but I'm a firm believer in allowing yourself to move on for yourself. 
Forgive somebody for yourself. Don't forgive them for them, right? Forgive them, but don't forgive them so that they can move on. Forgive them so you can move on. And uh, so many people are stuck up in the past nowadays. You know, so many people mm -hmm. are stuck up in, you know, it, 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 it's unfortunately an issue, right? A lot of people, you know, I think it's reasonable to be upset over a breakup and like a, a past relationship. But so many people will spend years and years of their life, you know, essentially, you know, eroding away in their bed if that's the right word you know like they're they're just it's like there has to be a point where you get up and move on with your life you know and i think mm -hmm. i'm a firm believer in that and you always have to forgive somebody you know or you don't always have to like clearly there's like you said it's situational you know if somebody somebody kills somebody it's i'm not forgiving that motherfucker you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. but in a sense in order for yourself to move on with life you have to you have to forgive them you know, and I think that's very you can't important. Let your life revolve around what someone mm -hmm. did to you. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I think I follow you on TikTok. I'm gonna send you a few TikToks of my favorite profile, and it's just like a positivity. I don't know if um, you're you're big friends with B, um, Bethany. Yeah. yeah she, uh, I send her these TikToks all the time, and they're just like positive TikToks, or just like. It's like a bunch of like podcast clips put together of a bunch of different podcasts and they're great. I love them. So I'm going to have to send you some after this because I, I yeah, want definitely. because I feel like somebody like yourself that preaches mental health and stuff. It's really cool seeing this stuff put into a content form. You know, it's very hard to make content around mental health, you know, it, mm -hmm. unfortunately, um, which I've tried to do with this podcast. I've tried my best, but, you know, it might not be the best product. Right. And that's that's OK. Um Moving on now. You're too uh, hard on yourself. I am. I know 100%. I tell my therapist says that to me all the fucking time. Um, as you can see, I have a really deep connection with my therapist. I love my therapist. She's just like my sister and I just relate to her. Oh. Hey, you see, I just, I, 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 I want to get my therapist on a podcast one time, but I, I don't know whenever that will be. But um, yeah, my therapist tells me the same thing. I'm the biggest perfectionist you'll ever meet. Like ask my mods, ask my friends. I'm the biggest perfectionist ever. It's terrible. You've um, taken way too many jabs at your podcast today. I've been taking mental notes, okay? Mm -hmm. You need to cut that shit out. Mm -hmm. You're a good person. This is a fun podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a motherfucker. Yeah, I try. You got this shit. I try. I try. <laughs> I try. I mean, I'm just here, you know? I Like, I'm very hard on myself. I'm about to tear up because I am. Just, I love hearing shit like that. I mean, so, so many people will send me messages late at night and they'll be like, yo, Gina, I appreciate your stream today. I'll just start crying. Like, dude. No. I'm like, that means so much to me, you know, like, I, not to get savvy. I'm moving on. I'm moving on. Uh, what's one thing uh, as a person you wish you worked on sooner, Vic? Uh, this is a very deep question. Um, whether it be as a streamer, a creator, a person, what is one thing you wish you worked on sooner as a, as a human? As a human, I guess, honestly, like, stop trying to make everyone like you and just mm -hmm. work on yourself and notice like even if you have a good heart and you try to be a good person there's still stuff to work on mm -hmm. and i wish i would stop being so hard on myself and just stay true to who i am focus on the good and just constantly you know evolving as a human because i notice and this is one of the things that got me into seeing a therapist and stuff i noticed patterns of the type of relationships I would get in, the type of friends that I had falling out with, or the way that I grew up and childhood stuff, there was a constant pattern. And it got to the point when I went through a pretty bad breakup, I was like, I keep attracting the same type of people. Even if it's not my fault, whatever, doesn't matter. What can I do to stop this from ever happening again? Mm -hmm. And that was the the breakup was kind of the cherry on top of, I don't want to deal with this kind of hurt anymore, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, I wish I would've went to therapy earlier and just really worked on myself because now I don't give excuses for people as much anymore. Like I still give people a chance, but if they show me who they are, mm -hmm. I don't go, oh, well, you know, they're just having a really bad day. They didn't mean to call me, you know, yep. a piece of shit. Like, yep. <laughs> Like, still understand they're a human being. I'm not just going to, like, throw you in the trash and say you're a piece of shit, but just kind of distance myself mm -hmm. and keep certain people at arm's length because they're fucking with my energy and I need to keep working on myself kind yep. of thing, you know? Yep. Like, One see people for who they are. Mm -hmm. 100%. So. I'm, I'm glad you brought up that, that like, excuse, excuse to an extent. That's something that I still work on. I feel like I give, I give too many... Oh, my God. My mods get pissed off at me, Vic, because... <laughs> 
they'll ban somebody in my chat and like clearly a guy that should not be in my chat right and i'll, I'll unban him unban him i want to talk to him and i give him like eight chances and then eventually he just stops talking and we never ban him and i guarantee you my mods hate me for it like it's serious <laughs> and i'm glad you brought up the breakup because i think it's something that a lot of people don't talk talk about and you know, as as a mental health streamer, right? And I'm sure you've gotten this too. A lot of people will come to you and get your advice on something or they'll tell you about something that they have going on, which I encourage people to do, you know? And a lot of people will come to me and they'll say, you know, Gino, I'm going through a really bad breakup right now. What do I do? And I, you know, I never try and give them a one-sided answer, you know? But I, I always tell people that a breakup is one of the best things that somebody can go through. And I know that sounds really wrong, but it is one of the one of the things that changed me as a person. It is one of the things that I know. Like, if you ask any great man or woman in the world, right? Any anybody that you look up to and you ask them if they've gone through a breakup, I guarantee ninety eight percent of them will say their breakup motivated them into who they are today, or uh, motivated motivated them into who they weren't, and then they figured out later that they weren't this person, and like all of that stuff, right? And I tell people all the time that. You know, as much as the breakup brings negative, there is so much positive that comes out of breakups. You know, I, for for example, I was very insecure, um, and my breakup really allowed me to find myself. I started going to the gym. I started bettering myself. I felt good about myself. I, I surrounded myself with um, you know, different friends and stuff, and I realized that there's so much more to life than living in the negative. And I found myself again. You know, and I think that's very important for a lot of people is to. To realize that the breakup isn't always so negative you know exactly and try to like acknowledge the hurt and process through it all but then also take the good aspects of it because mm -hmm. like mine was not a good situation but yeah. i learned a lot from him and well all the men in my life whether it was good men or bad men mm -hmm. i learned a lot from men because like hunting guns yeah. like all these things that i'm into a man has taught me yeah. so despite the shitty things that have happened through some of them i learned a lot and it shaped me who i am and hopefully i could use that to also hopefully get more women involved with mm -hmm. guns and stuff. I mean, I know, like, there's a lot of women that are in guns and stuff, yeah. especially these days. But, you know, hopefully just kind of, I don't know, spread that knowledge and get more women involved with things that are seen as manly. You know? Yeah, and I think <laughs> I think that's a very good point, is that a lot of people look at breakups as something that they... they a lot of people, and I, I think this is a huge mistake that a lot of people make with breakups, is that they instantly believe when they get broken up with or the vice versa, they break up with somebody else, that it's all the other person's fault. And they make it one-sided or they make it like a me versus them situation, you know? And one thing that I've, I've learned about myself and one thing that I preach to myself every single day is that it's nobody's fault. A relationship at the end of the day is a 50-50, you know, like clearly there can be you know situations where somebody cheats or something like that that's terrible and not excusing that but at the end of the day that uh, you know a relationship at the is a 50 50 50 50 you know thing if something happens you know take accountability if something ha or if they do something they should take accountability and that's what makes the great best relationships is people who communicate but also can be accountable for their actions you know and you don't see it a lot in today's world like truly, you don't. Exactly. Um, um, but I'm very glad that we we got into the conversation of mental health. Um, sorry, I made you cry a little bit. I didn't mean oh, to. <laughs> I didn't mean to. I tried to. Man, I'm still working <laughs> through some stuff. I'm sorry. Yeah, to make no, it weird. No, but... <laughs> it's so, no, don't. No, no, no. Don't apologize. This is exactly why we do this podcast. Is that, so that we can share stories like your own, Vic, and allow you to be vulnerable with a lot of people, whether it be, you know, people from your community, my community, right? Like everybody in here is so open and honest and they just want to talk because so many people hide this shit away. You know, and especially with a lot of the men that I've talked to, right? I feel like a lot of people, you know, I'll ask them questions that they've never been asked before. You know, like, how has being a dad changed you? You know, everybody's like, nobody asks that in the Twitch world. They're asking how to get drops and, you know, how to do freaking gunsmith part eight. You know, they're not asking like how the, how has a dad changed you? So that's why I like doing these podcasts. Allow me to open up and uh, 
expand the horizons of a lot of these creators, you know? So let's talk about the future, though, of uh, Victoria Ryan. What's on the horizon? Any big plans? New forms of content? Uh, Pestily shared some top secret stuff with me. Do you have any top secret stuff or just uh, plans for the future? Honestly, I want to get back more into my outdoor content. I okay. love, you know, I don't know, going outside and doing that kind of thing. Um, I'm kind of branching more into the music industry because I play piano and stuff like that. And I made some really good connections in the music industry. And I want to do more projects in that realm. And mm -hmm. I'm still always going to stream. I love it. Like, no matter what happens, I will always stream and that kind of thing. But mm -hmm. I kind of want to start branching out and to other stuff and working with people. And you that's know. awesome. That's so, so yeah. cool. How about I've, you? Um, I've actually never been asked to ask like a know you question like this uh, on the podcast. Uh, I don't know. Um, I think what, something that I learned this past year and, um, you know, slowly learning this year as well uh, is just to take care of myself mentally. I can't be the best streamer I can be without being mentally secure. And I am, as much as I would love to come up with a bunch of goals and stuff that I have for stream, you know, clearly YouTube Partner is a big one that's coming up for me. Um, Partner Plus was one, and I, I hit that in December. Uh, so we got that, you know, and I, I was very thankful with that. But one thing that I think I'm just taking on, uh, you know, throughout the next few years of my life, because, you know, I'm 22, I'm so young, I got a lot of life to live. And uh, one thing I just want to learn is just uh, how to be happier with myself. You know, that's that's my number one goal is just figure out who I am the next few years. You know, whether it be through trial and error, whether it be through, you know, bad things, good things, whatever it may be. Right. Like, it's just learn You've more about myself. Things happen to you like at this age, too. I mean, a lot of good stuff like that's huge. Partner plus. Yeah, partner at 20 I, I'll be honest, Vic. I, I tell my chat this all the time. I feel like a like. I look at myself and I mean this genuinely. I look at myself as a 30 year old so much. Like when I wake up, I, I, I don't feel 30, you know, I don't have back pain or knee pain, but I do mentally feel 30. Um, I, I financially look at things as a 30 year old. Um, I just, I, I don't know. I feel very mature for my age in regards to a lot of things. But you, know? you also kind of had to grow up a little quick, too, especially being on social media. It kind of forces you. It to... did force me to grow up a little bit. It forced me to go through some things that I didn't necessarily want to go through. <laughs> uh, it made me it made me go through a lot. Right. Like, I, I definitely feel like my my aging process, so to speak, is taking uh, taking a taking a toll. And uh, like, I'll be honest, when I was in high school, all I did was play video games. I didn't go to one party, one, you know, one bar, whatever it may be. Right. And. I went to my first bar in Vegas, you know, and that's like, that's rare as hell, you know, like nobody else is doing that, you know, so I had to grow up really, really quick um, with it all. Um, but yeah, well, you're doing just, a good job. I, I, I appreciate that. I try my best <laughs> every single day, you know, just trying to make it the best I can. That's all it is. Um, now, this is a new section. Well, it's not necessarily new now, but uh, it's what I like to call the speed questions. Um, before we get in the chat questions, so chat, if you guys have any questions there... I will take a few to ask Miss Vic here. Um, I want to ask you some speed questions. So you can answer this oh, as God. fast or slow <laughs> as possible. It's super simple questions. And uh, I tried to make it enjoyable and uh, personalized around you. Um, so first off, woods or the beach? Oh, woods. <laughs> I knew that question. Uh, <laughs> this is a weird one. Very similar to cats and dogs, like cats or dogs. Lizard or bird person? So would bird. you rather... Okay, bird? Okay. <laughs> Okay. Uh, favorite song ever? Ooh, Send the Pain Below by Chevelle. Okay. Uh, if you, I've, I've never heard that song, so I'm going to have to... You would probably like it. It's okay. a very... Is it sad? Empowering. Um, it's a happy sad. It's just... Mm. It's not... The lyrics aren't sad, mm. but it's, it's about, like... It, it, it'll make sense when you listen to it. It's just kind mm. of becoming, you know, yourself. That's awesome. I, I got to... Shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, 100%. I got to listen to that. Um, If you could permanently change your hair to one color, what would it be? You you can't change it back. So, That's tough because I love my black hair, but I mm -hmm. love the green. That's I guess why I green. asked this question. Green? Man, I guess green. Okay. <laughs> green? Uh, winter or summertime? Summer. Okay. Is that, what's your favorite, what's your favorite uh, season? Is it fall. Fall? Big fall person too. What about too. you? Winter. I love Winter. I love the snow. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's pretty for like the first two days, and then when it comes mush and nastiness. Okay, that yeah, Ugh. the grayness, the clouds, <laughs> the yeah, no sunlight. Yeah, you're no one hundred percent. You're right. Um, that is the outro. That is that is the podcast, Vic. We do have some chat questions, but I just wanted to say thank you for being on here. Um, thank you so much for giving me a time of day to be able to talk to you and, you know, everything. I appreciate you being on the podcast. No, thank you for even doing this and oh. having this space and like, <laughs> someone like of me course. on here. Like, this is are really you, cool. Are so you kidding? You. you are literally like, the, when I think of myself and I, like, when I think of myself as a creator, I think of myself as a mental health creator. And if there's anybody in the field that does it better than me, or it, it's not a competition in any sense, but it does it better than me, it's you, Vic. So I hope you know that. Um, well, you handle your temper better than what I do. I get really pissy, but you you are definitely... I will uh, say that is one of my strong suits. There have been a lot of situations in life that my friends are like, why are you not mad? And I'm like, because I forgive them. You stay them. so calm. You know? I, I, like, I never get mad at anybody. I don't know. Like I said, if I ever tweet something, uh, uh, you okay. know, belittling somebody, please tell me to delete we'll it your immediately. Turn notifications on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it probably won't be happening anytime soon. I'm in that. Uh, I told my friend the other day. I'm in my uh, my uh, sunset sunrise era where I just be looking at trees outside. I'm like, wow, that shit's beautiful. I'm in my like, like I, <laughs> dude, I love nature. Yeah, like I'm in my nature loving era. But uh, we do have some chat questions here. Um. Let me go up to the first one. Uh, how do you keep your hair healthy when it having it dyed all the time? Because it looks great. Oh, well, thank you. That's really sweet. Uh, I do a lot of uh, hair oiling mm -hmm. and hair mask. I'm always trying different hair products. But also, as corny and stupid as it sounds, but eating good, like making sure you have plenty of nutrients, mm -hmm. what you put in your body and stuff like that. Well, thank you. I yeah. feel like it looks like a disaster, so thanks. No, <laughs> no, hey. <laughs> You can I can't talk bad uh, about no, my no, podcast. No, no, no. No. You can't I can talk hold bad about accountable. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. No, no, no. <laughs> That's funny. Oh my gosh. Um uh a lot of people are saying that Chevelle is amazing. Ch is that how you yeah. Chevelle? Yes. That's okay. how I people are so picky with how they label different genres and stuff, mm. but that was the band that I got into when I was starting to check out rock and stuff. Mm. Uh like in that area from going to country to rock was Chevelle and I always will forever have a soft spot for them. I have talked to Pete on Instagram before, who's a lead singer, oh. and I've seen them live and they're such good people and That's they're so, so respectful cool. and nice. Yeah. That's so so cool. What? Oh uh, I I've never been to a concert. <gasps> Yeah, a what? lot of people. Yeah, I've never been okay, to a so concert. Okay, so twenty twenty four Chat yeah. needs to harass you into going to go I to want, a concert. So I I think I'm a little opposite of your uh, music genre. I'm a big Zach Bryan guy. Um, oh, okay. Noah Khan has been uh, has been a big one for me. If you know him, um, I like a lot of that folk music. You know, like uh, even Oliver Anthony. That uh, one song. Uh, freaking, I'm forgetting it now. The most popular one he just released uh, a while ago. Oh, uh, Richmond, North of Richmond. That's it. Yeah, that's a good one. I always love. So I love songs like those. With folk, do you like Bon Iver or? I do. That I do. Yeah. Um, Trampled bon by Iver. Turtles? I've never heard of them. You probably like Trampled by Turtles. That's... It's an odd band name, but it's yeah. around that realm of folk music. So are you are you in the folk music too? So Noah Khan, you know of? Hopefully, I've heard of him. Mm -hmm. Um, I know I've heard a song or two, but to sit here and name them, I I couldn't tell you. But mm -hmm. I've kind of dabbled a little bit in folk music. It's yeah. relaxing. Yeah. Well, I mean it. it if I'm going to be honest, folk music really reminds me of when I would go to drive through West Virginia and stuff. Like, yeah. That place is beautiful. When I think of folk music, I think of West Virginia, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I'm a big fan of it. Um, There's a lot of uh, other ones. I listen to a lot of, uh, oh, what is that? How am I forgetting their name now? Zach Bryan, I would consider more folk. He's kind of country folk. Um, I don't know if you've listened to Zach Bryan. Uh, yeah. Very good. Um. Yeah, it's just, yeah, I'm just a big folk guy. Uh, Hammy asks, what kind of aesthetic do you go for, or does she go for it? The vibes are immaculate. Oh, I assume aesthetic you. means... The alternative, baby. <laughs> <laughs> we got that gothy in country, okay? <laughs> well, I still, the alternative. <laughs> I, think, I think a perfect thing that describes who you are. It, what is your TikTok bio? It, I think it was like, 
Country Girl but Dark Mode or something oh, like yeah. that. Country Girl on Dark Mode. That yeah. is such a good that is such a good description of like your vibe <laughs> and like that is so so funny. That that's so Thank so good. You. That's really um, nice. <laughs> Van Girl asks, how do you define happiness? I think that's a deep that's a deep question. Oh man, that's a deep question and I got such a surface level response, but yeah. food, I fucking love food, man. No, 100%. That's the way to my heart. If I'm sad, bring me food. You know? <laughs> yeah, for like, sure. Take me to a nice restaurant, okay? Yeah. Like I don't, don't get into the horoscopes too much, but I am true to the whole tourist definition. <laughs> I like fancy things. I like good food, <laughs> friends, good people, honestly, like who you surround mm. yourself with. Like I agree. Be your own good people. I agree. B says, I don't have a question. I just love her. Oh, we I love, love B. you. B. She's so freaking beautiful. Shut up. I, I, it, I can't, I'll turn we, around and get sweaty. Yeah, Stop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we love B. She's, she's a good person. Um, I don't know if you've heard of cute, a uh, cute folk band from my town called Tiny Horse. I've never heard of that. No. Um, Are they on Spotify? Maybe. I don't out. know. It's apparently know. from his town. So that's pretty cool. Um, question, why does Vic hate Canadians when they're such cool ones like Noodle and Bieber? <laughs> okay, it's very similar to Shoreline Mains. They are the sassiest people I've ever met. And like, I love mm -hmm. banter. I love the shit talking back and forth in a friendly way, of course. Mm -hmm. But like, I love just calling them syrup guzzlers and giving them hell because they'll throw it mm -hmm. right back at me. You know, they don't go get all, I don't know, whiny is the word. Mm -hmm. Just don't fight back with me. I like people that want to fight. <laughs> that... I mean, hey, that's a respectable answer. I'm not, I'm, I'm not that way, but that's a respectful answer. <laughs> I, like, I, if I start beefing with my friends, they start bringing out insults, and I'm like, dude, that kind of hurt my feelings a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, my friends are crazy though. Um, we have a few more questions in here. Uh, what hobby have you always wanted to pick up? By the way, just uh, before you answer that, chat, we'll do, we'll do three more questions, including this one. Um, and then we will uh, we'll have Vic go on her way. Uh, what hobby have you always wanted to pick up? It's a good one. Oh, gosh. I don't know. Because I've done all kinds of weird shit. Like, I love snowboarding. I like rock climbing, that kind of thing. One thing or a couple things I haven't done was bungee jumping and skydiving. So okay. I want to do, like, crazy adrenaline junkie shit. Yeah. So, That's stuff true. like that. I I don't do anything exciting in my life, Vic. Nothing. I just, like... If you were to ask All right, me I'm the gonna tie you to me when I jump out of a plane, how about that? Well, I've been so <laughs> I've been parasailing once and that was the craziest thing I've ever done. But I'm just oh, I'm a fun. Yeah, it's fun. Until they dipped me into the water and I was like, dude, I'm gonna get ate <gasps> by a shark. I was so nervous. I was I was freaking out. But you it was did bad. it though. Like yeah. that's big. That's mm -hmm. scary to do. Yeah, so. I mean there's a lot of things in my life that used to be scary to do, like order ch from Chipotle. You know, I used to call the pizza place. I have social anxiety, so, like, I hate calling places. So, no. that's, like, I hate it. I, like, I can't order, um, like, I'll, like, I'll order food now because I've kind of gotten over it. But I used to never been able to go through Chipotle. Like, I had to have my friends order for me. I would be in the so I've never been to Chipotle, mm. but is it similar to like going through the drive through? Just that? Uh, no. So Chipotle is actually like a uh, kind of like a subway in a sense. You know, when you go through okay. a subway and you like uh, they send your bowl down the line or burritos, whatever yeah. it may be, right? That's that's kind of what we do um, okay. in Chipotle. It's very good. Have you you've never had Chipotle? Do you have no. one near you? I think so. There might be one around me. We have Cordoba or how do you say uh, Cordoba? Cordoba. Yeah, Cordoba. Yeah, those are and really I've good. I've been to one of those. Okay. They're good. Yeah, it's very similar to that. Um, okay. Adobe is arguably better than Chipotle, but that's for another time. Um, <laughs> my coffee guy is asking you a question. This is actually the guy that sends me a shit ton of coffee. Um, he asks, uh, what's her favorite coffee? And would she, she like some? He sends coffee to people Aww. for free. So if you want some, hit him up. Yeah. Um, what's really what's nice. your favorite coffee, though? I think we talked about um, it. Dark roast. The darkest roast you have. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. I, I'm not a big dark roast guy. I like the light roast. He sends me the light roast and stuff. He actually just sent me a thing of um, coconut coffee syrup. Toasted coconut coffee Ooh. syrup. It's homemade and everything, too. 
Um, he's crazy. We we love Crutch. Um, we have a we we'll, we'll do a we'll do. Man, there's there's three good ones. I'll answer. Are, do you have time? Vic? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I just don't want. Oh, I don't. Time, yeah. Man. Okay. Okay. I have three three questions. I I've read that are really really good. Um, what's the best way to fight burnout while content creating? Honestly, watching other people that you feel inspired by, and it's mm -hmm. a weird thing in the content creation world that's very annoying. But the whole battle between being inspired versus copying. We're creatives. We're going to constantly bounce ideas back and forth get inspiration and i love just watching people that i get inspired from or mm -hmm. i get ideas from it's like ooh, what they did there makes me have an idea from this mm -hmm. like pull inspiration from other people and that's like getting yourself excited again yeah because i get like with the burnout it's like uh, i'm doing the same thing all the time yeah. so that's I, even though it sucks it's the perfect time like those plateaus are the best like little signals to me of like, oh, I'm going to do some cool shit. <laughs> so it's like, I, I, it's a refresher of finding new ideas and new stuff to do. So yeah, no, it's weird. <laughs> that's a really good one. Um, we had one up here. Uh, what was the hardest switch up from your regular work to content? So I assume like the switch as in like regular work to content. So you do content creation full time, if I'm not wrong, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. I assume he's asking like, when you didn't do content creation, what was the hardest thing uh, to translate to essentially? Um, Like the transition? Yeah, like the transition was probably some of the hardest <gasps> to switch to. Honestly, you know, the hardest part with the whole transitioning process, if I'm understanding the question correctly, is people's perspective on content creators because i still get the people that it's like oh go get a real job that's not a real job it's like man i'm paying taxes on this shit it better be a real that's job. what i tell people I'm like the irs so, taxes me you shit like yeah. it, it, this shit's real and it's so <laughs> annoying and where i live you know in, in west virginia there's still that old-fashioned mindset mm -hmm of you need to go work a nine to five and if you're not hating your life then it's not a real job you know and since we enjoy our job we make money from this and people still have that stigma thing with video games being a waste of time mm. so with that and then making money through video games where they already see it as a waste of time <laughs> it's a weird thing like i still get kind of like i don't know if embarrassed is the word but a little weirded out when someone asks me what i do for a living and I'm like, oh, I stream. And the looks that I get, or just me telling them I stream, is still weird because it's a new concept mm -hmm. of getting paid to play video games, even though we all know it's much more than that. But that's been the hardest part for me because I come from a blue collar family too. So yeah, you're not working outside nine to five. Like what the heck, getting up at yep. five in the Soft morning? Soft hands. To Soft hands. Yeah. Have you seen that Soft on hands. TikTok? Soft hands. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but I always, that's, it's funny you mentioned that because I, I think the funniest part about their argument of like, um, oh, it's not a real job is hilarious to me, right? Because what they consider a real job is the most miserable, uh, hardworking job that they hate every single day of their lives. And yeah. then they're, they're belittling me because I don't have a job like that. It's like, brother, do you want me to be fucking miserable? You know, like. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I'm making, uh, I'm sorry, I'm making money playing video games. My bad, you know, like, <laughs> like, oh, well, Gino, you aren't in the, you aren't at the, the job site. You are in the construction pouring concrete. It's like, do you want me to be doing that? <laughs> like, is that something that you enjoy? Like, I, that's what yeah. I never understood, right? That's what like, I never people understood. people look at us and it's like, do you really want, like, me going out there <laughs> no. on your electric poles and doing your little, like, man tools, turning on your like, do you want me up there doing that? <laughs> yeah, you want me building your fucking house and shit? No, you don't, man. No, you don't. Um, that's funny. Um, Sweet asks, what's the next content creator you want to go to? Oh, wait. What was the question? Wait, what's your favorite? What's the next content creator event that you want to go to? Like TwitchCon? Oh, or? like an event? Mm -hmm. Oh, shoot. Probably TwitchCon because I've never been and I keep telling myself you I'm need going to. to go. and you need to go. You need to go. Me and Sweet Dude, will bully I'm you so into it. I'm so scared to going because, like, I would love to meet you. I would, mm -hmm. well, I met a Sweet IRL, but I would love to go hang out with Sweet and everyone, but I am terrified. It's like, oh, what if um, I. I 
I don't know, I'm not an asshole in person or anything, but it's like, man, what if I'm short or like uglier in person? And they're like, man, she's kind of ugly or man, she's put on some weight. Like, I'm, I'm so scared of them yeah. thinking of me differently. I, I don't know. I got social anxiety. I, no, that I shit. get it's that 100%. The, it's the perfectionist yeah, thing. It's, I, I felt the same way going to TwitchCon and I can promise you that that feeling faded maybe 30 seconds into going to TwitchCon because I don't think you realize how many people just l love to be there in the same presence as you. You know, people <sighs> that I like, and this is no disrespect, I had people that were first time chatters after TwitchCon come up to me at TwitchCon and be like, hey, I've seen you before. Can you sign my water bottle? And I'm like, you want me to sign your water bottle? Like, what? what is this shit? Like, that's that's weird, but I'll do it. But, like, <laughs> people just love being in the same presence. You know, we all have the same hobby of enjoying Tarkov, you know? And uh, it's something that a, a lot of people uh, really enjoy doing. And I can promise you there is, there is going to be no judgment whatsoever. And if there is, we're going to kick them out. <laughs> we're going to kick Thank them out. You. Yeah, no worries. No, There's going to be no judgment, though, I'm telling you. Um... <laughs> that's that's funny. Yeah, one peg says everyone is short. That dude is tall oh, as God. shit. I saw one peg at the partner party, and I was like in a group of people. It was like me, Jesse, somebody else. I see one peg walk in, and the dude's just fucking towering over me. I'm like, all right, dude, Jesus well, Christ. Well, I saw the picture with him and Steph on Twitter, but Steph is tiny anyway. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I can't tell if one peg is like a giant or yeah. if Steph is really that fucking short. Cause like, damn. You know who's massive? <laughs> Fudge. Fudge is, I keep hearing that. Fudge is like, I, I always hype him up. I say he's 6'8", but he told me he's 6'5". The other day, I was heartbroken. Uh, he's 6'5". <gasps> he's, dude, he, like, next to me, I look like a chump. You, you know what I'm saying? You and Julie are the two that I saw the pictures of. I'm like, oh, my God. He he is tall. Yeah, they, thank you. Finally. Somebody, <laughs> listen, I'm tired of this disrespect from chat. Everybody's like, you know, you're short. I'm like, dude, I'm not that short. <laughs> oh man compared to one peg yeah okay but listen i'm not that short um and one final question it's not really a question uh noodle says what's your favorite pokemon and why is it toes is it toes is that how you say that toes toes it's togepi togepi i don't play i don't play that shit you didn't play pokemon mm -hmm. was that before your time mm -hmm. oh you was bb oh okay it's gengar and actually i have mm -hmm. tattoo of gengar and then I have an army of Gengars back there. I don't know if you can see them. Oh, I do see them. Yeah. So do it's they? Like, you know, I won't stand up for myself, but my Gengars will. Okay. No, that's respectable. <laughs> so wait, wait. Do you, so is Noodle making a joke then? So it's not. Noodle thinks he's funny, but he's a damn Canadian. Yeah. Ass. <laughs> Man, I hate the Canadians. Fuck, <laughs> dude. Oh, I'm so glad that we share the hatred. Anyway, no, I don't actually hate you guys, okay? I don't actually hate you guys. I just think you like to copy us Americans and then say you don't want to be like Americans, okay? And it pisses me off, okay? And then you want to you want to know what else pisses me off? I'm going full screen for this, Vic. I'm sorry. Oh, Hold on. I hate, I hate that you motherfuckers just say that you're always nice. I've met some Canadians that are mean as hell to me. Going back. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, we're back. Do you feel better? Yeah, I feel so much better. Okay. Sorry, that's Good. my that's my one. You just said earlier that I was calm and I don't have a temper and I just let it loose. Oh man, you've been holding that man. in for a while. Yeah, I, I can have. tell. That was I, dude. They they hate me so much. The Canadians come in here and just flex shit, and it's just like you want to be me, but you don't want to admit it. I hate it. Oh my god. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, listen, Vic, where can we find you? platform schedule tell Ooh. us all about you man i'm all over the place okay and i'm awkward with this shit but i'm on twitch just my name victoria ryan same with kick um same with youtube just victoria ryan uh my tiktoks is spooky squirrel okay so if you can't find me with my name it's spooky squirrel okay awesome Love and it's it spooky squirrel with uh two zeros instead of yeah. uh two o's right because it looks like boobies so yeah those are the big guys oh we appreciate boobies, Gino. <laughs> I we love you tits. Love. For sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Vic, thank you again for being on the podcast. I appreciate oh, you, you being here. Me. I appreciate you you spending time and, and allowing. How was your coffee? I do like to ask. It that. was delicious. Thank you. Okay. And I'm how glad. was yours? How was your milk coffee? I still have <laughs> half of it. 
and I will finish after this. So you know, well, I thank you. You know what's funny? For everything. You know, yeah, what? for sure. You know what's funny, Vic? I actually stopped. I stopped sipping my coffee after you called it milk. Okay, and then you 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 notice I haven't taken a sip. Editor, get I'm on that. I'm sorry. I got your back with the whole anti-Canadian shit. Yeah. I'll fight you with that okay. one. But that All coffee, right. man, that needs some work. All right. It's about as pale as my freaking skin. Well, not right now. I kind of look like a Loompa Loompa on your stream right now. But typically, it's it's a, it's as a, pale it's as the lighting and everything. It will come out better in the recording. Don't worry. Okay, do not do not worry. I pr I apologize. It's the lighting. I try and change it, but it still fucks up. It could be my yeah. end. Who knows? But thank you so much for, for doing sure. what you do, by the way. Yeah. I hope you know that like this is the amount of work that goes into this and talking about heavy topics like that. Like That yeah. means a lot. Of so, course. And instead I, of the typical, what's your favorite gun in Tarkov? This is nice to, yeah, to and sit I, down I and I wanted to out. do something different. And I, I say this, and, and not to you know go off on an, an entire tangent, but... One thing I realized within the content creation space is that everybody does the same thing. So many people ask me, and I, I don't, I'm sure you've seen it. I make my titles every single day something motivational or something that somebody can inspire with, you know? And I, so many people ask me, Gina, why do you do that? And I just, I want to be different, you know? I want to, that's what I try and do with this podcast. Like everybody, there, there's multiple podcasts talking about everybody's favorite gun and the changes in Tarkov. I want to do something that where we can reflect on mental health and relate in a sense because it's not talked about a lot and we can relate in a sense of mental health and hardship in life because so many people go through it every single day and I want to provide something that every, somebody can listen to and relate to it, you know, and that's why I do this shit. You know, so just want to be different, thank but you. I appreciate the kind words. Of course. Thank you for your time, Vic. I appreciate yeah, you. Thank you um, for trusting me. And of course. Hopefully the, your community doesn't think I'm too fucking weird. <laughs> but thank you so much. I mm -hmm, really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Vic, we we appreciate you. We love you. Also, I'm going to DM you after a stream. Uh, I'm going to okay. get in contact, get you in contact with my coffee guy. Get you coffee. Oh, yeah. And okay. thank you to of him, course. by the way. For yeah, he's a legend. And he is a legend. We love you, Vic. A lot of people in chat oh, are too. W. W for Vic. Oh, we love I... you, Vic. We love you. <laughs> I couldn't look at chat today, man. I was way too nervous. I'm like, what do these people hate me? No, I can't. You, you go back I and they... stream up, but I'm not looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome, Vic. We appreciate you. Thank oh, you thank so you much so for much, the man. time. We appreciate you. You have a good rest of your day, and thank you so mm. much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Have a good rest of your stream. You Crap as well. Drops. Bye. 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 I love chat. you. Oh, I love Vic, dude. I That was one of my favorite podcasts. I don't say that a lot. I say it after every episode. But I love that. I love Vic is such a, a so down the earth person. We, uh, we, we love Vic. Um, moving on. Uh, so I have to end the recording editor everything. Uh, I would like to point out. Uh, do not forget to check out the Coffee with Gino Twitter uh, for all you audio viewers so you can see some updates with the stream and stuff. Um, I would like to make a small announcement and just say that our TikTok has gotten banned. Uh, the Coffee with Gino podcast TikTok has gotten banned for multiple violations uh, to TikTok's TOS. I have uploaded nothing but positive and reinforcing comment or uh, content. In fact, I don't even think I cussed once on there. I got banned. Um, we got banned on there, and I have no clue why. They won't even let me appeal it. So, yeah, if you don't see the, the Coffee with Gino TikTok, that's why. Um, somebody, I, we are fairly certain, is uh, false reporting us and um, uh, trying to get me banned as we speak. So, yeah, I appreciate you stopping by. Um, I apologize for the inconvenience, and if you're asking me, I, I literally have no clue why I got banned. Um, I would like to also say thank you to Battlestate Games for today's drop streams here on Twitch. And thank you to Cafe Colazzo for the blend of coffee. Uh, we appreciate both of you guys here. And as always, stay safe, stay caffeinated. Peace.